We got some content creator drama, okay? There's names, there's leaked DMs from Pokimane, from XQC. There is crazy shitness, and it's by Dream. I know everybody be hating on Dream, bro, okay? That motherfucker is kind of he kind of cringe if we're being honest dude he, he a little cringy okay and this is coming from a vtuber look at me you know what i mean but th this is crazy he titled this video the truth it has more than half a million views in three hours and he's exposed in mad people bro look we have leaking xqc and pokemon's private messages doxing what else do we have moist critical bro we have a bunch of crazy stuff and it's an hour long so we're gonna sit through this we're gonna watch it all bro okay so make sure you get some snackies if you're gonna be out beautiful out bro i appreciate you chilling with us we're gonna check this out put a hole so what's the deal with dream i literally know nothing about him except that people freaked out during his face reveal and that he's fighting gumball now for some reason i don't know either asshole that's why we're watching an hour video do i need to treat you like these my fan cam mother huh you want bad stupid chat i'm not these little k-pop i'll be chess all right, let's watch, bro. Let's watch. Let's watch. <laughs> in this video, I'm going to be very vulnerable, open, and honest. I go into my past. I go into controversies. Wait, I'm that was his picture? Was that real? Was that a real fucking, uh, was that his real IRL stuff, chat? Is that really him? I thought this was, when he got leaked, I, this is really Dream? Yes. I remember seeing this on Twitter, bro. They're like, oh, Dream, this is Dream. And he was like, no, that's not me, bro. That was actually him? Oh, that's embarrassing, dude. I go into controversies, and I also debunk very serious lies about me including by involving the police, legal teams, and extensive research. Uh -oh. It will get uncomfortable. I will get into details of my life that you probably don't want to hear, and I don't particularly want to share either, but it feels necessary given the circumstances, and honesty and truth is my top priority. As you guys have probably noticed, I took a long break from YouTube, and since the face reveal, I've hardly really uploaded. And I've really focused on other things and separated myself from a lot of the stuff I was doing before. You may think that this was due to the hate from the face reveal, or for other reasons, but really there was something else that happened right after the face reveal, and it really made me step back from what I was doing and have a lot less passion. Uh -oh. If you've been on the internet recently, you've probably heard or seen some pretty crazy stuff about me whether it's the voice actor of gumball attacking me or accusations against me regarding grooming you've probably heard a lot of pretty crazy stuff i thought it's extremely important for me to make this video and provide as much information as i can and i just want to right off the bat state as clearly as i can that these allegations are not true i plan on going to extreme detail to prove that in this video and to all the people that are spreading lies oh, fabricating shit. stories and making false accusations for fun or because they think it's funny the, i don't care i accept that i'm a horrible person this is not funny this is not a joke this is people's lives ranging from my own my family, my employees, to actual victims that stories won't be heard or believed in the Yikes. future because of this. I understand that some things in this video are much more important than others, so I split this video up into chapters. And you can skip to and watch the parts that are most important to you. I I'm gonna be honest, the only thing I want to watch right now is the Pokimane and XQC, um leak dms that's really all i want to see but we're gonna sit through all of it i will say that everything in this video is very relevant i think they're all vital topics to include because they help clear up my character so yeah the video has chapters and if you want to skip around there's a pinned comment and again i realize that nothing in this video is as important as me talking about serious allegations so i've made it really easy to skip ahead to whatever is most important to you just because there's other stuff doesn't mean anything is less important monetization on this video is on but every dollar will go to a charity that's linked in the description you better than me bitch. if i'm doing controversy in an hour-long video you know how much this already has half a million views. You know how much money this getting? F a charity. F a charity. I'm greedy. Motherfucker. My mama need a house. Hell no. I'm buying my mama a house. I'm buying me a car. I'm buying me a motherfucking Rolex. I'm gonna get some gold teeth. I'm gonna just spend it on some a bunch of ignorant shit, to be honest with you. F that. I'm getting some new clothes, some shoes. My fault. Start the video. Otherwise, I want to start with the biggest lie I have ever told. The face leak photo. Oh, was me. Of course, it's from when I was really young and I've lost a lot of weight since then. And it wasn't at all representative of what I look like now, but it was me. Obviously, I said many times that it wasn't and a lot of people have and still do use that against me to say that I'm dishonest. But the reason I lied about that is because of the face reveal. I'd been planning the face reveal for years. I sacrificed so much by staying inside and avoiding cameras for so long. I mean, I had covers on all my windows and even to go to the dentist, I left hiding in the back of a car Yikes. and went to a different state. Yes. What? I was paranoid. I wasn't going to let anyone take that moment away from me. Whatever I had to do to make sure that moment was suspended and exciting, I'm sure I would have done. And if anything, the face leak photo probably ended up creating more suspense and excitement to see if I was lying or if I actually looked like the leaked picture. Now, of course, there was a lot of personal information attached to the leaked picture, how it was found, where it was leaked from. So that definitely contributed to why I lied about it. I didn't lie because I was ugly or because I was overweight or anything like that. And every time I talked about the leaked picture, I always mentioned that I struggled with my weight in the past and that it's disheartening to see people make fun of the poor kid for that, which obviously I was the poor kid. And I think that's something I'm willing to admit now because I face revealed. I'm not risking that big moment anymore. And I also feel much more comfortable about my personal information and how I look and 
so on. The day the face leak was posted, I was playing a Minecraft tournament and someone called the SWAT team on me. Dream is AFK. I'm clear here. Um. Holy shit. I was put in handcuffs on my front lawn with cops with rifles pointing at Holy me. Holy shit. And I was shit. pretty much swatted from that day on almost daily to the point where the reason Sapnet moved in with me before my face reveal was to answer the door when police showed up. Because people started camping outside with cameras to try and reveal my face and I needed someone else to answer the door. When the people that were doxing me thought that they had the wrong address, my family ended up getting swatted. And my mom answered the door thinking that it was pizza for her and my little sister. They were held at gunpoint with police helicopters circling the neighborhood. People showed up at my house. People showed up at my family's house. The first time I ever got- Jesus, that that's kind of creepy, bro. Holy shit. Got swatted. I made sure not to mention it at all. Funnily enough, I actually got interviewed by a SWAT team member while I was muted and playing Minecraft parkour with the SWAT officer right next to me. But yeah, it's just all to show that even though I was very adamant about denying the face leak, it was much more about the fact that there was so much personal information attached to the picture and I wanted as much separation from it as possible. It had nothing to do with how I look. I'm very proud of my wheel. To be fair, bro. To be fair. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, chat. Swatting is scary. That swatting shit is wild, bro. You got fucking, what, six officers busting down your fucking door yelling, get the f on the ground, get the f on the ground when you did absolutely nothing. I'm gonna be honest, if I ever get swatted, I hope I have clothes on. If I answer the door butt ass naked, I'm gonna be mad as shit. You know what I mean? And then someone's outside, outside my house with a camera and shit, talking about some, oh, there's Kenji right there, there's Kenji right there, face reveal, oh my God, face reveal, take a picture of him. And my, my dick dangling or something. Bro, that would be the worst. I think if cops ever come, knock on my door, I'm gonna shit my Myself. What they gonna do? Arrest arrest the shitty person? They can't. They don't wanna get shit on them. Crazy. Weight loss story, and I was never ashamed about it at all. I think that it's very encouraging to see people accomplish weight loss. I did it all naturally. I lost hundreds of pounds. You have not seen me at my heaviest. And it's one of those things that I think is very encouraging to others. I love inspiring people, so it's a story I'm sure I'll tell in the future. But in that moment, it was not the right time to tell it. Mm. I feel like right now it's still kind of uncomfortable to talk about it, but it's annoying seeing the same damn picture. <laughs> so here's some other pictures of me from before I lost weight, just so there's more variety. God damn. Now moving on to one of the most talked about countries. I'm not going to lie, bro. Before He's I lost weight. ugly. Just so there's more variety. But at the same time, bro, he got way better looking. Like the weight loss did him so good, dude. It was the, I, no, I don't even think, it, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't even think it was the fucking weight loss. It was that funky ass haircut. That motherfucker got a mullet and shit. He's not even ugly. He just had a really weird fucking haircut. Okay, this goes to show, if we have any men in here, bro, okay, hit the gym, get a fucking haircut. You good, bro. You good. Gym, haircut, you chilling. That's all you need, really. And a little beard. You know what I mean? Someone said neck beard. Oh my god, you're right. It's like a it's not even a neck beard, it's like a chin beard. Shut the f up, chat. Let's watch. Now moving on to one of the most talked about controversies. The cheating scandal. I'm gonna be pretty concise with this one because it's been covered a million times and most of you are probably pretty sick of hearing about it, but it's still really important to talk about. It's one of the most frequent reasons people point to as to why not to trust me. I did unintentionally cheat on a speedrun that I officially submitted to the leaderboards in 2020, and the speedrun mods were completely in the right for taking it down. I was using a disallowed mod for about a week on my live streams when a new version of Minecraft came out, and I was unaware that this mod existed. When I was defending myself, I didn't know that I'd been using the mod, and it's a really complicated and lengthy explanation of how it's very reasonable that I didn't know that I had the mod, so I can't go into that here. A lot of people say a that- A bunch of Minecraft nerd shit. No one gives a fuck. It's impossible that I wouldn't have known that I was so lucky, but those people don't realize that it was a little bit of luck over a very long period of time, and not a lot of luck at once. It was actually only uncovered by a cheater themselves, who later got exposed for doing that same thing in the past. Yes, that's right. Minecravenger. The very same person that first published Kenji, can you add subtitles? Y'all are so needy. Exposed Dream for cheating in his runs has just been caught cheating himself. And not only cheating once, but subtitles piss me off with a passion, dude. Full world records over a span of more than two years. I was defending myself so confidently publicly because me and a developer had already considered and ruled out the possibility that I could have been using a mod. Carl Jobs, a very well respected YouTuber that also investigates speedruns, made a video going into all the details. It's over an hour long. If you'd like to watch it to understand how that could happen and all the supporting evidence around it, yeah, we don't can. care. He is very critical of me in it, but here's his short conclusion that backs up what I'm saying from after his thorough investigation. In conjunction with all of the the evidence I've seen, I believe the essence of what Dream was claiming in his paste bin was probably true. In my opinion, it is definitely more likely that he really didn't know his drop rates and barter rates were modified. Was it intentional? And I do believe that it probably wasn't. He did a lot of research and interviewed a lot of people to come to that conclusion. He interviewed the mod team, me, developers, and a lot more. He even said something afterwards that applies to a lot of the situations we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to go ahead and play that clip too. In one breath, people will complain that Dream is a liar. And then in the next, Spout made up assumptions that couldn't be further from the truth. It it's like Minecraft community sh no one cares about, bro. Except like if you play Minecraft. And even if you play f Minecraft, no one gives a fuck. 
like everyone is lying everywhere. I'm still fully responsible for my behavior back then towards the moderators, regardless of my intentions. Did act like a little baby and caused the majority of the problems myself, so I'm sorry. Regardless of if you believe me or if you think that I'm being dishonest, since this all happened over three years ago, a lot has changed since, and I've done my best to move forward and grow as a person. I did my best to make amends with the mods, I apologized privately and publicly for lashing out at them, I donated over $50,000 to the speedrun community through tournaments and personal donations to over 15 different speedrunners, I voluntarily took down all my speedrun times, even ones that had nothing at all to do with the mod or the cheating scandal. I also deleted my original response video, and I haven't speedrun officially since. It's been over three years. Now that that's out of the way, I want to clear up some quick misinformation around it. One, it had nothing to do with my manhunt videos or any- Oh wait, isn't Dream a groomer? I guess we'll find out right now. Any video or speedrun I have ever posted on my YouTube channel. It was specifically <laughs> live streamed attempts that I did during Funny a one shit. week or so period over three years ago. It's a common misconception that the cheating had to do with my YouTube channel, manhunt, or any other videos I've posted. Two, I didn't hire a fake astrophysicist to defend me, which is also commonly said. Knowing nothing about math, but fully believing in my innocence at the time, given the accusation was purely based on math, I used a website for math freelancers and reached out directly to a highly qualified professor that said they'd be willing to help me. They even made one of their conditions before agreeing that no matter what their conclusion was, I had to publish their results, even if their conclusion was that I was guilty. I agreed to this. This is what I genuinely don't like about y'all, bro. Y'all just say stupid shit. Like you say the most outlandish, crazy shit and then just follow it, I think, or I don't know, maybe. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Let me read this fucking comment for this, this dumbass motherfucker right here, dude. Okay. I have no idea if it's true. No idea. But where the fuck did it go? Like, bro. Okay. Someone just fucking came in here and was like, isn't dream the person? Person that jerked off on on someone's dress and but something something I think like what the fuck do you mean bro like imagine imagine what's your like imagine your name was fucking Jim or some shit and you just go into some random fucking chat and just be like hmm hey did you hear that Jim fucking nutted in a drink and made someone drink it I think that's just what I heard like what the fuck are you talking about bro who the fuck just randomly says that shit motherfucker if, if it's not proven with facts shut the fuck up on God bro y'all be saying the most craziest shit with with that with zero proof shut your dumb ass up this whole video hopefully will cover some fucking questions and then we can fucking answer some questions and it'll probably be another fucking video of another youtuber exposing this fucking truth quote unquote okay asshole shut the fuck up leave it to the fucking professionals because you assholes just be assuming the worst and saying the stupidest shit on oh, god bro shut the fuck heavenly hit him with it one more time bro hit him with it more these fucking idiots dude it briefly explained the situation. Look at this. Like, look at this stupid shit. On Twitter, some cosplay said Dream got off to their techno cosplay, but they didn't have proof. Okay, then, so why the fuck are you bringing it up in my chat? If there's fucking no proof, what the fuck? are we talking about right now what I, I don't like dumb motherfuckers bro anyone that's just dumb as shit that just be repeating shit and they don't even know what the fuck is going on why like my question is are you fucking dumb i already know the answer but holy shit damn i seen your mom doing crack behind the the, the mcdonald's last night i don't have no proof but yeah nah i saw her sucking for three dollars last night but i don't have no proof though i don't know i don't know it's just what i heard though shut the fuck up Dream briefly explained the situation, and the expert agreed to help. The expert provided Dream with a few terms, one of them being that Dream post the results no matter the outcome. Obviously the report ended up getting ripped to shreds, but I had no idea that would be the case. I knew absolutely nothing about math, and I fully believed in my innocence. So when a highly qualified third party was agreeing with me, it made me even more confident and bold. There was many factors as to why the report ended up being bad, partially due to the public pressure and it being rushed, partially due to them not knowing as much about Minecraft as the mod team did, but regardless, I didn't bribe or make up a fake astrophysicist, which is something people frequently say. The speedrun mod team and many other parties independently verified their credentials and the fact that they exist. I also put way more information in the description on this, just for transparency's sake, including proof about the professor, all of my emails to them, and even screenshots of messages that I never provided in the past. I think that's really important to clear up because it's used very, very frequently to say, if he will go as far as to make up a fake astrophysicist to lie, how far will he go with other lies? And I would just like to point out that even though I didn't lie, lying about a Minecraft speedrun is very different than lying about very serious allegations. The next thing I'm going to talk about is a pretty big one that you might not have heard about, but it's a pretty important one. Manatreed. Now, if you don't know who Manatreed is, Manatreed is a what content is that? creator that I added to my server, the Dream SMP, a couple years ago. They were anonymous like me, and they had a very short career. There was a thread made about Manatreed saying that they doxed him and that he was an IRL friend of mine, had been charged with domestic violence, and that I was trying to hide it. Manatreed was removed from the SMP by me, all of his accounts were deleted, and I made a statement talking about how I don't support domestic violence, I wasn't aware of any domestic violence, and that due to how complicated the situation was, I decided to remove Manatreed from the SMP. I also strongly alluded to the fact that the doxed information was incorrect. Everything I just said was true 
true, except for the fact that Manitreed was my childhood best friend. I came up with the name Manitreed, I made the accounts, I grew up with him, his grandparents were like my grandparents, he was like family to me. The criticism I get to this day related to this is that I intentionally housed and hid an abuser. Because Manitreed Yikes. was faceless and anonymous like me, people said that it was planned deliberately in order to hide a domestic violence charge. This is not true. In late 2020, he had a lot of problems. He was struggling with homelessness, had been in multiple recent car accidents. I knew I could help him, so... I did. I offered him a place to stay, I paid for his groceries and gas for a while, and eventually, I came up with the idea to add him to my server. He was my childhood friend, I trusted him, mm. and he wasn't a risk. I was anonymous, so obviously if I wanted to play games with him, his identity couldn't be known, or it would leak my identity. Whenever the thread first came out saying that Mana treated his girlfriend- Uh, I'm- I'm sure, like, 100% he made that whimper audio and talked weirdly to that young girl, and he did more- it way more, I think, like, something just insane, but it's only a guess, so I'm trying to figure that out. Oh my fucking god, you're dumb. Oh my god, y'all are just dumb as shit. How are you gonna say 100% and then you're gonna say, I guess? Y'all are dumb! Like, I actually have dumb viewers. Holy shit. Oh my fucking god, bro. I'm you know, geeking. Important. You see, yo, Heavenly, do you see that dumbass message? I'm 100% sure he did it, but I'm not, I'm not sure yet. And I'm still trying to make sure. The f*** you mean? You're going to state, state something that like it's a fact and then fucking follow it. Uh, I'm not sure though. Y'all are so fucking predictably dumb. It's crazy. Kenji, stop reading these dumbass chats. Every time I look at chat, it's some stupid shit. Shut the f*** up. This sucks though. This fucking sucks, chat. I'm not gonna lie to you. If you go back in my past shit, dude, it's bad, dude. It's bad. Listen, you can want something good for someone, you know what I mean? And they could take advantage of it in the most disgusting ways possible. So if if he fucking did everything he could to make sure to protect him or his community and himself, bro, I don't see anything wrong with this at all, bro. You know what I mean? He packed him the fuck up. He deleted all his fucking accounts. He fucking, uh, he kicked him out of the SMP. From my understanding right now, I mean, he did everything he could to protect people around him. I trusted him and he wasn't a risk. I was anonymous, so obviously if I wanted to play games with him, his identity couldn't be known or it would leak my identity. Whenever the thread first came out saying that mandatory abuse girlfriend i responded Yikes. emotionally calling people gullible because i didn't believe that someone i had known for so long and grew up with could do dickhead like and at the time I'll see he fucked up here bro you don't defend you wait till you get all the fat i don't give a fuck who it is it could be your fucking dad it could be your mother it could be your brother you wait till you get all the fucking facts don't don't fucking question oh people could be go fuck out of here hell no make sure everything is heard bro you understand Although no one knew he lived with me in sapnet so it seemed crazy that he could somehow hide it from us i jumped to the gun and reacted emotionally only later Dummy. did i properly look into everything and i apologize after i confronted yeah, him in that real life, he claimed that he wasn't an abuser that he had just had an altercation with another guy and that his ex-girlfriend got in the middle of it he claimed that he never hit her that he had just caught her cheating and was fighting the guy that she was cheating with that the cops got called and that he got arrested this is just what he Stupid said boy. this altercation would have taken place around a year before he moved in with us and i had no knowledge of it. People thought that domestic violence took place when he lived with us because my address was on a court document of his, but that was far after when he was on probation and had to tell the court where he currently lived. He also lied to us and told us that he was on probation for smoking weed in order to not have us question anything suspicious related to it. Even though he claimed to me that he wasn't to anyone. I couldn't just take him for his word, and so I did research myself. I reached out to his ex-girlfriend and talked to her about it all. She wouldn't really say that much. She said to give Manitreed the best wishes for his future, and that his mistakes were behind her, and that she just wanted to be left alone online. I don't want to push her for information, so because of that, I didn't feel comfortable having Manitreed on the Dream SMP anymore. I didn't have full confidence that he was being honest with me because he had already lied to me. And mm. I was also still faceless and really didn't want to have to dox myself to explain the situation. I decided the best idea would just be to remove him from the server. I had created all of the accounts, so I completely shut them down and removed his access. That meant that there was absolutely no risk that, even if he was lying, he would ever cause future harm because of me. Mm. Unfortunately, this wasn't a cut and dry situation. This was one of my childhood best friends that had always treated me with kindness and had lied to me. Me and, Sapnet. and unfortunately, due to all of this, I have no contact with him and lost someone that was like family to me. I'll never know the exact truth behind it. Fuck everything. that. That ain't family. If they gonna fuck up your fucking brand, fuck that. That ain't family at all, bro. Fucking bum. Fuck out of here. Thing. The person that I knew was kind, generous, and compassionate, and I never would have added him to the server if I thought he was anything otherwise. But what I do know is that, other than my initial crude response, I stand by my actions. I think that I navigated a really complex situation the best that I could. I got rid of any risk, supported a victim, made it clear that I didn't support domestic violence, Brand over family, lol. Absolutely, bro. If you're, think about it, think about it, think about it, bro. Spooky, if you're fucking family or even like, no, that was like a family friend, I guess, or whatever the fuck, or like a thing. But think about it like this, bro, okay? You're building up, a, a, say a, you have a business, let's say a fuck, like anything, right? You're, you're building up a fucking business that you can help your fucking future kids. You could put your mother in a home. You could take care of your father, your grandparents, all that. You're gonna let some fucking asshole, uh, let's say like little brother or 
fucking or anyone it doesn't fucking matter who it is it could be fucking anyone capitalism no no, no fuck that fuck that fuck that if you're gonna let anyone come fuck up whatever you're trying to do and support your family fuck that bro your family would support your uh income no matter what no no, 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 no bro if you, if they're so inclined to fucking just disregard everything that you've built they already spit in your face bro you understand if they're if they're gonna put every if you're trying to help someone and they're gonna put you aside and be like ah fuck it ah fuck them they're you're an afterthought at that point you understand like fuck that you can suck my dick at that point you don't see me as family at that point either like fuck that you ain't shit who the fuck are you you gonna spit at spit on me motherfucker you get no fuck that even to the detriment of one of my oldest friendships I completely understand people that don't know my side of this situation, assuming that this makes me a liar. And that my family is dumb sometimes. Listen, family members could be stupid. They could be dumb. They could be ignorant. But knowing damn well there's consequences to your action and then still being like, hmm, this could probably fuck over someone that's helping me and it could bite the hand that's feeding me and then still go through with them actions knowing that, bro. Like that that right there is that. If you're going to act ignorantly and then, and then you do some stupid shit, that's forgivable. You know what I mean? Like it's dumb. But if it's something that can jeopardize everything that someone one's built and you know it you're guilty of everything that everything that fucking comes to you you deserve fuck that covering up wrongdoing i even had creators that thought this until they talked to me about it it's not unreasonable at all and that's why i figured i had to talk about it in this video even if it is personal and uncomfortable before I jump into the- Can you talk about like my therapist? Nah, cause motherfuckers think like families and friends it won't get cut off, bro. What? If chat, listen, listen to me right now. If anyone jeopardizes your mental health or business or anything in life, any any parts of, of life, bro, quality of life, cut them motherfuckers off, bro. I promise you, if you in a toxic relationship, all that shit, you cut them off, bro. Fuck it. Bye. Like what? What are we talking about? Oh, fuck. Like who the fuck are they? At that point, fuck out of here. What? I can't, Kenji. What? Ah, bitch. The only the only people I won't be able to cut off is is like my my kids. If I ever have kids in the future, that's because I gotta take care of them. They could be a fucking dickhead. My fucking kid could be a go uh, a druggie. Okay, he could be go to let's go do some coke, dad. Let's go do some coke, and I'll be like, Jimmy, hey Jimmy, let's uh let's relax a little bit. Let's talk. And be like, Dad, I want money for coke, and I'll be like, Okay, well here's here's ten dollars, okay, and maybe we could get a subway sandwich or something. You know what I mean? Like, all right, I, I I'm gonna support my kids no matter what they want to do. All right, I'm an enabler for sure. But when it comes to anyone else, fuck that. What? The most important things I'm gonna address. I want to talk about something that's come up a lot due to these allegations and something that's commonly said to give credibility to me being a bad or weird person. I'm going to play a clip from Moist Critical who talked about the allegations pretty neutrally. Let's go, dude. But while talking about them, he said this. Dream's audience has always been on the younger side of things and yet Dream constantly engages with them in very inappropriate ways, such as like Yikes. posting thirst traps. He does post thirst traps, even knowing that his fans are children Yikes. so when these claims come out i think a lot of people start to take them at face value because they're like oh that that sounds like the dream that i know uh, you know this sounds like something dream might do so it's probably true even you know though it's fucked up bro you know it's fucked up <laughs> uh, okay i'm this isn't a defense for dream at all i don't go fuck drink is like my dick i don't give a fuck about him right but you know it's fucked up right if we're talking about like save the kids and thirst trapping is bad for fucking kids that's such weird behavior motherfucker if we go to twitch right now scroll down to fucking the we don't gotta go scroll down we can just look at front page and just see ass and titties everywhere bro can we protect the kids like what the fuck what the fuck happened <laughs> you know what i mean we got all these fans are pinned in the link link fucking uh what's it called in the chat what the fuck are we talking about bro what the fuck let's, let's get all these weirdos the fuck up out of here i'm tired of motherfuckers acting like it's not weird i support sex work absolutely okay fuck yeah you want to share show some ass and titties absolutely for sure motherfucker can, can we act like it's not like we don't got my kids on the platform no like what the fuck are we talking about dude motherfuckers crazy right now a lot of the evidence backing it up isn't the strongest. Now, before I talk about this, I just want to ask that if you're watching this and you share the same opinion, try and give me the benefit of doubt. Genuinely listen to what I have to say and discard your preconceived biases. Because yeah, if you think someone's creepy and then they're accused of being a creep, it clearly changes how you think. So I'm going to break down multiple things that Charlie said because I respect him. I respect his opinion. I think he's a super reasonable guy and I think he's an awesome content creator. One of the things that he said is that I post creepy pictures and thirst traps. He does post thirst traps. So that's the first thing I'm going to talk about. Uniquely, because I didn't reveal my face until last year, I can actually pretty reasonably show you every photo and video of myself that I've ever posted on the internet. So they're going to start scrolling by now in a completely random order. While you watch, it's important to note that what you- Okay, they're going by kind of fast, bro. Post on something like Snapchat is very different 
different than something you'd post on Instagram or Twitter. Snapchat runs ads every five or six photos and encourages you to post upwards of 100 photos or videos a day to have the most growth and make the most money. They only last 24 hours like an Instagram story. So on Snapchat, you kind of just spam anything. So for me, it's silly filters, my cat, Whatever food I'm eating that day, I get a haircut. Because of that, it's much easier to take one silly photo from Snapchat out of context and make it out to be something that it's not. On top of that, there's a lot of fake accounts that I think people fall for all the time. They post thirst trap captions using my photos. And with how many likes they get, there's a lot of people that casually scroll Twitter and think their posts are mine. There's one specific one that was extremely popular and verified before it was suspended. It if you're a YouTuber and never get a Snapchat for real, bro, fuck that. Fuck Snapchat, I don't, I don't really reply. I learned not to reply to you y'all dms chat y'all are fucking weird dude y'all are so fucking weird some of y'all be so normal sometimes you'd be like oh my god kenji i love your streams i'm like thank you so much and then it's like kenji kenji i love you i love you kenji i want to i want to be you i love you i want to be inside you i want to be inside your friend i want to sleep with you i want to you i want to you you know what i mean like i get real weird dude so i learned to just read them if y'all ever dm me i see them i just don't reply because i know it's gonna get real weird y'all just weird bro y'all just weird even if you don't want to come off as weird some of y'all just come off as weird bro you know like them fan calls that we just watched in the beginning of the stream it'd be like that posted tweets like this and this and this these are just completely normal photos i posted of myself with no caption but they repost them and Put a weird caption. This has fooled tons of people, including people that have made pretty big videos about me. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if Charlie saw this account a couple times and thought its tweets were mine. A lot of people also say stuff like this. I don't know why he still uses Snapchat. It's still kind of weird. I told you. True. I don't mind using Snapchat. Which I think is super reasonable to think. If you don't know that there's creator accounts now that work very differently to normal Snapchat accounts, you can promote stuff to millions of people through Snapchat's algorithm. And even as of recently, you can make a lot of money. Obviously encouraging Whoa. you to post whatever random- Snap paid 12,000 creators more than 250 million. But, uh... Hey chat, listen, I'm thinking about starting a brand new Snapchat account. I know you might think it's weird, but hold on, let me tell you right now. Hey, hey, I think it's a great experience for us to become closer as a community. <laughs> stupid photo you took. I mean, I hardly even log into my Snapchat myself. <laughs> Fuck even bad. have someone else on the account. Because there's a manager account feature where I can just post from my personal Snap and never even see any of the messages. I also sometimes have people say that I'm weird because of fan art account likes from my fan art account. So I just want to clarify, I'm not the one behind 99% of the likes. I've never made that public because it is beneficial for artists for people to think that it's me every time. But again, when it's being used against me to say I'm creepy, I have to clarify. Hi, so I've ran Dream's public Snapchat since January 2022. There's nothing weird and he doesn't really even log in. How old is this girl? <laughs> oh, hold on one second. One sec I mean, I'm not insinuating anything, but the allegations now. Okay. And, and I'm just kind of curious. Who is this? To it. Um, I also run his fan art account and have been since January 2022 as well. I'm good friends with Dream and the Dream team. So he thought I'd be a good pick to run it. I mostly just like and retweet art. I'm banished from replying. Sometimes people will call him creepy for stupid stuff that I've liked and I've never really taken it seriously because I just think what's being depicted in the art is funny to me. Like DNF kissing art or something because I'm their friend and it makes me laugh. It just happens to be really good art. But when it's being used to say that dream is creepy or weird, I feel really bad because he's definitely not. There's been times that he's messaged me and told me to unlike something or asked why I was on a DNF liking spree. And he's definitely a silly guy, but people shouldn't use me liking art that I found funny or just thought was impressive or artistically against him. I can still be more careful about what's liked on the account though, and I also can re-clarify my boundaries, which I do at the end of this video. But I will just say here that I've never supported not safe for work art. Of it is kind of uncomfortable to be honest. What's uncomfortable right now? You, you sitting weird or something, bitch? Get a pillow, stupid bitch. Miners or from miners, I think that that's weird. Hate gross, actor. And I clarify my boundaries <laughs> on myself later in the video, but Hate generally actor. it's just, I don't want anything weird. Actually. I also later have the person who used to run the account back in 2020 say something as well. But yeah, like one out of every 1,000 Snapchats I post, people end up spreading and making fun of, which is fine, of course, but it's when it's made out to be weird that it's disingenuous. Now that's not to say that I- How is Dream- Can we stop, right? Can we just fucking stop? Why are we watching a fucking hour video on this fucking white dude? Like, what the fuck? What is going on? How did he get famous? This very- average looking motherfucker why are we like who gives a fuck about him so true like what the fuck is going on bro he played minecraft was he like really good at it or something like what the fuck i'm not real no i'm just saying like i'm not hating or nothing but like what the fuck are we doing i'm posting the exact same thing as everyone okay. else or that what i'm posting isn't different than other people it definitely is i was faceless for a very long time never took pictures of myself and had no social media before youtube take that he always wearing the same motherfucking the little shit behind me right now with his the shit on his head. Take that shit off your head, dude. 
fucking grown ass man. That's why motherfuckers be making fun of you. Fuck. He's just pissing me off with that fucking hat. And he always got he always got like three fucking colorways with it. Take that shit off, bro. So you're seeing literally my first time ever taking pictures, and I am. We just could tell. Kind of goofy. Again, it's fine to make fun of. It's not fucking goofy. You're a grown ass man that doesn't know how to fucking. You, you never went through your fucking Snapchat phase, huh? When you're fucking younger. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Like some of these pictures are stupid, but using them as evidence that I'm weird or making them out to be weird just isn't fair. I don't really take myself seriously. I don't think I'm super attractive. I don't think I'm super funny. I think a lot of people miss understand some of the things that I post that are satire. A lot of my videos before I did Minecraft challenges were satire videos, and I still post a lot of satire. A perfect example of this is my unface reveal. I posted a video on my channel where I unrevealed my face. It's a satire video. I have my two best friends burst down my door, tell me that I'm ugly and to put my mask back on, which I agree with, make a professional mask, and then go through the McDonald's drive through with it on, while saying that I'm never taking it off ever again. The number of people that took this seriously was in the tens of millions. People see the headline, assume that sounds like something that cringe you guy would do and then it's history and the same thing happens with my tiktoks like almost my entire tiktok page is sarcastic but every now and then someone will take a tiktok of mine completely seriously like i posted a video yes. of me with the chat filter on and said no filter right after the face reveal i made a tiktok where i take off the mask and use an ugly filter another tiktok where i make fun of the face leak photo or many other sarcastic posts but then i post a tiktok where i'm in a walmart wearing my mask and people take it so seriously i get tons of hate and it said how cringe it is that i would go shopping in my mask that it's pathetic that i'm trying to hide my face after I already revealed it, or I post a TikTok where I sing one of my songs, say no auto-tune, and then kiss the camera, and it's the <sighs> that I'm trying to be hot or think I'm such an amazing singer instead of that I'm- Oh, bro, you're just fucking cringy. You're a cringy human being. That's all it is, dude. Like, motherfuckers are just cringe. That's all. That's not- It's not a bad thing. It's just- You can't be mad at motherfuckers memeing on you when you're that cringe, though. Like, what are we talking about here? I'm self-aware and playing into the cringe. I didn't watch that and go, ah. You are so cool. You are such an amazing singer, and you're also hot. Like, it's not serious. Yes, I do post cringy stuff sometimes. Uh. And I'm not trying to say that I've never been cringy, or that you can't make fun of content that is intentionally cringy. But I've never posted anything that you could remotely say is a thirst trap, or inappropriate for my audience. Because as you can see, in the context of all these other photos I've posted, it's not honest to single out one weird Snapchat out of context of the thousands I spam, and then say that I post creepy photos. But yeah, like, one photo I posted was heavily spread as a thirst trap by parody accounts, and it's this. I'm supposed to be dead. It's definitely not a thirst trap, but it's not like I was sending it to somebody and being weird. I was just spamming photos on my public story. Oh no, George not found is giving him the slopperson. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Like, yeah, it's goofy. It was not a thirst trap. I posted one or two photos with my shirt off ever. Motherfucker, listen, 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 listen. You're f uh, and this one's because I thought it was cool to see my hair comb back since it's always forward. And you can't even see me or my body. There's also this monstrosity that's frequently Yikes. shared. Like, this is a gross photo. I look terrible. This is not a thirst trap. This is a terrible photo. This is just disgusting. I was just spamming photos, didn't think much of it, and posted it. And now it will haunt me until the end of time. I'm cringy and being serious when I make satire posts. I'm full of myself when I post a normal photo. I'm gross when I post a bad photo. I'm weird when I post a silly photo. It's just people assuming the worst or just not knowing who I am, which I guess is fair. So yeah, that's what I have to say about the thirst traps thing. But obviously that's just photos. Now in terms of other stuff, I've definitely had my opinions morph over time, especially since- Chat, what do y'all think, bro? Give me your thoughts right now. Kenji, what do you want, Ash? What the fuck? What the fuck do you want, Ash? What are you up to, dude? What the fuck do you want? I think he's full of shit. I think he's, I think he's just cringe, bro. He's cringe. I think he's just cringe. Self-aware. He's just cringy. Yeah, I, I feel like it's easy to dunk on him because he's just cringy as shit. Cringe? Yeah, yeah, I agree, bro. He's some cringe white dude. I, bro, he's a fucking Minecraft streamer. Like, what do you expect? Like, what? Are you serious right now? Some of y'all are bullies for real? No, I'm not saying I'm not saying he's cringe to be a bully. I'm saying he's cringe just because, like, that's... I feel like the internet dunks on him because he's just... He's cringe as shit, you know what I mean? And that's not a... I'm not saying that, like, as a derogatory thing. I feel like he's just... He's unintentionally cringe 24-7 and motherfuckers be, like, just on his dick. You feel me? Cringe isn't bad. It's just cringe. Yeah, bro. Exactly. You get me. Since I have face revealed and... What I snacks do y'all have? I know you got some fucking snacks bro they so got to meet fans in person but we can still talk about some old stuff that people frequently use to say that i'm weird first of all me calling my fan base kittens now, this was a stupid tweet Yikes. if i could go back never would have tweeted it i completely understand that without knowing my intentions or what i actually meant it could seem super weird the whole discord kittens meme wasn't as big yet and i just tweet so much i just wasn't really thinking it came out horribly and i will never live this down it is still something that my friends make fun of 
I make an analogy about how I don't love my fan base. I love my family and best friends, but instead more, I love cats. So it's not creepy. Can't say anything without people taking you out of context nowadays. This sounds like a whole lot of cap me forward to this day i was just trying to explain that when i say i love my audience i don't mean in the same way that i, I love like chat i love y'all bro i'm not gonna call you my kittens that's just weird i asked i'll ask if you want a sippy sippy in my ass that's that's not that's not weird bro chat you want any sippy sippy you want some sippy sippy my ass any sippy sippies you can get sippy free sippy sippies what you mean no my f is. But yeah, I ain't calling you my kittens. He's just, he's just a cringe dude, bro. That's all. I love my friends or my family. That I mean it in the way that I love dogs, even though I don't know every dog person. What? So now you're calling your fan base dogs? Not now. Okay, okay. I'd rather fucking eat a little Discord kittens, motherfucker. I can still say I love dogs. I should not have said kittens, but it's not what I meant. It was a stupid tweet. I've tweeted tens of thousands of times the last few years. It wasn't my brightest moment, but it also wasn't me trying to be weird or going kittens. It was just an analogy that I regret using. Another point Yikes. of evidence towards the dream is weird narrative was me quote unquote selling my baby pictures. In what? 2022, my merch company sold a flash drive that was dream themed. It was going to be sold empty. And then my mom and my dad, who helped run my merch company, had the idea to put some random stuff onto the drive. So it felt more unique. I thought it was a cool idea. The content on the drive wasn't what was being sold. It was the slap wristband flash drive itself. We added some drafts of books I wrote from when I was a teenager, some memes, some old Minecraft screenshots of me and my friends, some notes and emails from teachers talking about me being rebellious in middle school. <laughs> and yes, two pictures of me from when I was a baby. The intent was wasn't at all to sell pictures of me when I was a baby, which other celebrities have actually literally done. The intent was just to show a little bit of where I'm from. Like you would show pictures in a biography you would sell or something. It was my version of a- This doesn't seem that bad. Am I getting gaslit? I feel like I'm getting gaslit, dude. Little biography with writing and pictures and quotes. I think there's definitely something to be said about the concept of being in possession of a file of someone else's baby picture versus it just being in a physical book. So I totally get it. But you have to recognize that that's clearly not the intention. It should be something funny or cringe to make fun of and not be a serious buy your parents in on it it's not like bro i'm trying to when i do merch after i'm done working with this company i want to get my mom i want to work with my mom to do merch you know what i mean that way i can pay her an absurd amount of fucking money to go do something that someone could do cheaper you know what i mean <laughs> just so i could give it an excuse to pay her <laughs> you know what i mean and make sure she's good <laughs> you know what i mean like it, it's just it's a w sun move bro okay like it's that's all i don't that's not weird having your parents work for you is not weird <laughs> like chat there's i feel like there's some weird things in here Have Having their, his, his parents work for him on merch is not weird. Y'all pick out the stupidest thing. Shut the f*** up. Curious thing, like being about pedophilia. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as you can probably tell by the pictures going by, I have a pretty normal life. I think I'm a pretty average guy. And 99% of the things I post online are extremely normal. Despite how much I- Uh, you know, you're cringy as fuck. But you are a millionaire, okay? Also, nothing's normal about you, bitch. What the f*** are you talking about? You made millions off of playing Minecraft. You. I put myself out there. There's only a few weird out of context things to show for it and a couple goofy photos. So yeah, I think when people say that I post thirst traps or post predatory things to my audience, they're just misinformed. I don't think that Charlie is being malicious at all. It's just a lot of misinformation and it's something I've never really made an effort to clear up. I always lean into the cringe, but when it's being used to strengthen serious allegations, that's when I kind of have to really break down how I am. But yeah, I mean, on top of all that, my audience is not as young as people think. This isn't a hill I'm going to die on. Cringy equals goofy now. He's just, he's trying to fucking do all this bullshit right now about the weird shit. Then he'll get to the serious shit. I'm hoping and i hope that serious shit comes out i want to know, know about a lot that. of people have their minds made up or could not be convinced believe it or not i have one of the oldest audiences in all of minecraft youtube kenji what the hell is this Motherfucker, use context clues i started youtube through coding and extremely complex stuff like reverse engineering pewdiepie's minecraft seed my videos even to this day are super long don't have that quick retention style editing or sound effects or anything that a lot of channels do and i also have a large pro gamer audience because my videos involve a lot of technical skill my audience outside of youtube is younger but the vast majority of people i get recognized by on the street are college aged and usually dudes being like what the f it's dream on twitch i've covered heavy topics in this video i'm covering heavy topics me and my friends all swear on every other platform and we're definitely not kids channels in any way just because i post minecraft videos doesn't mean that my audience is just little kids most people that watch me either used to play minecraft or don't even play minecraft at all I think Charlie's audience is, of course, much older than mine. But if I posted photos like these, which to be clear, if I was ripped as hell like Charlie, I would 100%. It would be made out to be predatory because it's me when it's... <laughs> People do be on Dream's dick, <laughs> but, but Charlie isn't that cringe, bro. It's not at all. And that same standard... I feel like it's just easy. Like, bro, get, don't fucking... Get the... Ah, get the f*** away from me, motherfucker. You back the fuck up. What was I gonna say? I was gonna say, um, I think fucking heathen.
Um, I forgot what the fuck I was gonna say. This motherfucker scared the shit out of me. Damn. It isn't applied to TikTok stars or really anyone else but me, just because I'm the Minecraft guy. True. A lot of the photos me and Charlie have posted are actually really similar. It's just people cherry picking goofy photos of mine and then making them out to be weird. When it's just me posting random photos, because that's literally part of our job. But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about that. I, they now might be on Dream's on dick, bro. Some really important stuff. Over the last year and a half, there's been a bunch of really serious allegations made against me. There some we of them were quickly disproved, others admitted they were lying, but there's still some that I'm gonna address in this video. The first allegation made against me was pretty quickly discarded. It was an allegation of flirting and had some inconsistencies. I'm still taking it seriously though and don't wanna overlook anything, so I'm gonna talk about it now. The first ever allegations against me that were spread pretty far were made the day after my face reveal on October 3rd, 2022. A girl named Anastasia tweeted out, he's only face revealing because he's scared that I'll do it first. And then she followed it up by tweeting, I'm too tired slash real life struggling to get involved, but the YouTuber trending right now already face revealed to me years ago when he was flirting with me when I was a minor. Obviously, because of my face reveal, Yikes. it took off, pointing out inconsistencies, asking questions, and so on. I didn't have any inappropriate contact with this person. I didn't have any sexual contact with this person. I hardly even remember who this person is at all. And the only messages I could even find with this person were friendly Twitter DMs. And even in those Twitter DMs, I mentioned that they had 18 in their bio, which they contradict. I definitely didn't face reveal to them. That's an obvious lie. Almost nobody knew what I looked like at all before my face reveal. Not even most of my best friends that had known me my entire life, let alone someone I don't even remember talking to at all. She posted a screenshot of some texts and claimed that they were from me. She showed a screenshot of my TikTok being from your contacts to try and prove that the texts were from me, which people quickly pointed out isn't possible because I have a Google voice number hooked up to my TikTok, which isn't iMessage like the text. Uh and again, she never claimed any sexual misconduct. She never claimed anything related to nudity or sexting. This was also in early 2020 and she had 18 in her bio. With everything and all the inconsistencies, it wasn't taken that seriously. But it's still worth noting because people still somehow say this is one of three victims of mine. So yeah. Before talking about the next allegation, I just want to address something that I think is pretty important. I see some people say, why respond to fans at all? Or that it doesn't matter what Dream said. The fact that he responded to a fan is creepy. And people saying that are missing a little bit of nuance. First of all, back when I started YouTube in 2019, obviously I had a very small community, even moving into mid-2020 before the Dream SMP. It's very common that when you have a smaller community, you're trying to grow your community. And part of how you do that is by interacting with people and responding and being active. I've always been pretty active in my community. And when I was really small, I used to respond to just about literally everyone that DM'd me, even if it was just one word answers. Obviously mm. later on and as I grew, I replied less and less and things evolved over time with my fan base growth. Like as an example, when I started my public Snapchat in 2019, I ran the account, but in early 2020, because I was growing, I completely passed the reins off to someone else and pretty much never logged into it ever again. Hi, I would like to remain anonymous. So I'm just gonna be calling myself Rebecca. Uh <laughs> no paid actor. <laughs> I used to run Dream Snapchat starting in 2020. I did that for probably around the year and I would like read through all the messages and I'd screenshot art or funny comments and I would respond when it was appropriate. How old are you, ma'am? Okay, okay, okay. If you're trying to build credibility, okay, I think having someone as just as anonymous and just a voice is not the way to do it. You know what I mean? Cause like I could I could just make a YouTube video and be like, yeah, I didn't run my fucking Snapchat when I was texting these bitches. You know what I mean? This is who, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Uh, there is definitely nothing weird going on in this account. Dream hardly even logged into it, and it was mainly me. He never used it inappropriately, and although I no longer work for Dream, I am not aware of him ever acting inappropriate with fans or anyone underage. Most, if not all, of the Snapchats I've posted since then have been through the manager account feature, meaning I use my normal Snapchat and post to my other account like a story, without even ever logging in or seeing any messages. I think that when people talk about messaging or becoming friends with a fan, most people are thinking of a stan or a super obsessive fan, because what makes you a fan? Having watched one video, two videos, ten, being subscribed? There's levels to it. My point being that when you're talking about messaging someone and it being weird, there has to be a weird dynamic. Obviously, a streamer that's subscribed to me and has watched my videos in the past and DMs me uh, should not be A located. paid actor wouldn't make sense. They just exposed him for hiring them if something ever happened. It's probably real. Not sure why everyone is saying these people are uh, kids by their voice alone. Wild. Oh, no. This motherfucker doesn't know how to take jokes. Don't talk about my kitten like that. That's not a paid actor. And, and they're not just young. Relax. Fucking joke. That the same as a random person that does the exact same thing. I've had fans Buddies of mine. Over there friends of mine. But I don't go seeking out friendships with people who have obsessions with me. There's a difference between a fan of mine who reacts to my videos because they're entertaining and makes some content about me because that's what gets views that I end up becoming friends with than a random stan that posts thirst edits of me. Obviously a massive difference. There's a difference between a random stan in your Twitch chat 
that watches every stream because they love you, and a regular viewer that's in your community because they have common interests with you that you end up becoming friends with. And at that point, they're no longer a fan. They're a friend. And in some cases, becoming some of the most beloved couples on the internet. My point is that there's a lot of nuance. Ah. I think it's a responsibility of a creator to be able to recognize dynamics, avoid any weird ones. You can't just look at the fact that somebody follows you or has watched a couple of your videos and write them off as, oh, they're a fan. Therefore, we can have no conversation. I was also fans of a lot of my friends before I became friends with them. A lot of people that I ended up hiring as editors or- Uh, most people aren't taking it as jokes though. You are, but everyone else saying for real, for real, they all sound like kids, but whatever suits you. Bitch, no suits fit you, you big bitch. Motherfucker, what do you want me to do? Control everybody's fucking, hey guys, don't laugh at jokes. Don't do it. Like, shut the f up. What the f are you talking about, stupid motherfucker? I'm supposed to control a thousand people in this motherfucking Twitch chat, you stupid bitch? Fuck the fuck out of here, dumb motherfucker. And if you're trying to build credibility again, if you're, and you're using a fucking anonymous motherfucker, that makes zero sense. Like, what? I could go, I, I, I could be accused of beating some bitch up, okay? And then I could just fucking have some random fucking, oh, here was a random, here's a random friend that's seen the whole situation, but they don't want to say anything and they have no fucking proof and they, we're not going to say their name or anything. And, and he just comes on and says, well, I didn't see Kenji swing at, at a bitch at all. Like, what the f are we talking about, dude? Like, move, bro. Kenji got a point? When you're trying to build credibility, you're not going to fucking use an anonymous person, is what I'm saying. That's very valid criticism. Fucking cry about it, bitch. Artists, or really anything, are fans. And then, of course, you can become friends. Again, the whole point is that there's a lot of specifics to it. You can't just write somebody off completely. But again, that's fans. That's not stands. Otherwise, moving back to the next very important thing. Now, the second allegation is what I'm going to talk about in extreme detail. Second allegation Let's came out soon after it. the first and said that the first allegation was why they were sharing their story. It was from a girl that claimed that when she was 17, we inappropriately messaged. This did not happen. Let's get into the details. On September 23rd, 2020, Amanda messaged me from her personal Instagram account, sending a message that was clearly a fan message. She thanked me for saving her life, and I replied to this message. In September of 2020, I was a lot smaller than I am now, so I got a lot less DMs, and I was much more active in, like, the fan communities and replying to people. And all, all I replied was, oh, thank you for the kind words. And then I also replied, glad to make you smile, after she followed up with the message. I put a transcript of every Instagram message that I've ever sent her, linked in the description. It might not be every message that she sent me, because there's proof that she deleted Instagram messages to me. Uh -oh. An old TikTok of hers has messages from me that wasn't in her post with the accusations when she showed our messages, but my transcript tried to include those and piece it together. Um, but again, it, it might not be all of them because I don't know what she deleted. I only know what she deleted from the thing she accidentally showed in her old TikTok of the deleted messages. Amanda, on the other hand, how are you doing, Dream? September 25th, the next day I replied, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Amanda, the same day replied, I'm doing okay. Could be better. Could be worse. Thank you for asking. Amanda replied, how's your kitty doing? I love cats. I replied and said she's doing amazing. September 20th, 28th. So three days later, Amanda said, Dream, I need some advice. I'm trying to become a small streamer on Twitch, but not a single person joins my streams. How do I get an audience? October 2nd, okay, so pretty normal. a few days later, I replied and said, try and play with your friends, maybe? Post clips to Reddit and stuff. And then she replied and said, okay, thank you, with the heart. The next day she messaged me again and said, Dream, would you ever consider playing Among Us with me? XD. I guess this was, this was during the Among Us craze. We're still in 2020. October 5th, 2020, I replied, maybe, heart. Amanda said, LOL, I'll take the maybe. That would be sick. I didn't reply. So this is a month and a little bit later. Amanda said, hi, Dream. And then she sent another message that was deleted after she made the allegations. The f happened to the mic? We don't know what it was. We only know the last couple characters. And again, we only know it exists because she messed up and included it in an old TikTok of hers. And then I replied and you know later and said hi. Amanda said, "How are you?" November sixteenth. So that's another. Wait, what? So that's another few days later. I replied and said, "Good." good. Confused. He confused the fuck out of me right here. Messed up. I don't. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Did he go out of his way to say hi and engage in a conversation, or was he just replying to her? Deleted. Uh, after no, no, no. She, no, no, no. she said hi. And we he don't said know hi. what it was. Got you. Got you. Got you. Last couple characters. So like he messaged first. No, no, no. She said hi. Replied and said, "Good, good. How about you?" She replied. Lord Almighty, he's saying so much, but he's saying so little. You f dumb. He's reading the messages, motherfucker, and he's giving you a timeline. What the f are you talking about? Replied and said, "I'm pretty good. Thank you." November thirtieth. So, you know, another two weeks later, Amanda said, Hi, Dream. I want to actually become a streamer like you and your friends. I'm just so uneducated on what supplies I need. Watch a YouTube you video, bitch. you recommend products I need to successfully stream? Like computer, cam, mic, headset, etc. You have no idea how I would appreciate it. December 5th, 2020. So, like a week later, I replied and said, Almost everything I have was recommended by Bad Boy Halo. Haha. -ha. Amanda replied, and she sent another message that she deleted after she made the allegations. That again, we won't know what it was. December 26th. So, almost a month later, Amanda sent a video. We don't know what the video was. I don't think it was opened by... I don't know though. I didn't reply. January 5th, Amanda said again, Hi Dream, I just want to say happy late New Year and Merry Christmas. This is why you don't fucking reply to people though. They just be fucking blowing your phone up. Yo chat, I replied to maybe like three people. Y'all motherfuckers don't stop replying, bro. Y'all be on my 
And then, and then on fucking, I, I can't do nothing but like block you on fucking Twitter. Cause if I don't block you, I keep on getting a doodums, doodums, doodums on my motherfucking phone. And y'all just be doodum, 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 doodum in my motherfucking phone. And I can't do shit, but get the, ooh, ooh, y'all annoying as shit. Everything you've accomplished this year. I hope I am fortunate enough one day to be as successful as you. If you could tell me what kind of computer you have, that'd be great. January 16th. So 11th. just mute it, man. It's different. Cause if I mute it, like on Twitter, Twitter's like the only thing I keep my, uh, my replies open just in case someone has a problem with me or someone whatever fuck they could just DM me, you know? I mean it's just for like transparency and shit like that but motherfucker dude yo people will fucking they'll they'll message i'll message back i'm like thank you you know what i mean and they'll just keep on messaging keep on messaging i try to mute but they're always at the top of my motherfucking messages that shit is annoying bro mo fuck Fuck. Seven days later, I replied, thank you. Amanda replied, deleted message. And then part of it was, how are you? But obviously I didn't reply. April 13th, so a while, like a long time later, mm -hmm. Amanda messaged me again and said, hi. I replied, hi. Amanda said, how are you? I said, decent. How are you? She said, I'm all right. Thank you. Then she said, I heard some snippets of uh, Replying once that that's okay, but talking to her like, bitch, what the fuck? Uh, what the fuck? That's on him now? No, it's not. He didn't say anything weird. What are you talking about? He's not replying. There has been nothing weird about this conversation so far. Like, what are you talking about? I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think this, this conversation is weird? There's nothing that's weird. So far, she's like, hi, how you doing? How's your cat? I'm a big fan. Hey, how do I start streaming? Hey, how do I start streaming? Hey, love your voice. Wow. How do I start streaming? You know what I mean? There has been nothing weird so far. So the song you're working on, and I really like it. You have a really nice singing voice. I replied on April 14th. Thank you. So that was uh, the next day. Um, she said, you're welcome. And then December 26th, so that, that was like a long time later. She messaged me and said, Merry late Christmas. Heart. I didn't reply. Um, January 10th, she messaged me and said, Hi, my Snapchat was banned and I have no friends. How are you? I replied two days later and said, how TF does a Snapchat get banned? Amanda replied and said, I'm pretty sure it's because I posted videos. Of me now he's entertaining stupid shit. 2014 are gone. So sad. I replied the next day and said, damn. And then she replied that same day and said, yeah, it sucks. How are your holidays? I replied the next day and said, good, good. How about you? And then uh, Amanda replied that same day and said, pretty good. You may be wondering at this point, why are you replying to her? Exactly. You seem clearly disinterested. You're taking days or weeks to reply. and then Not even you... clearly disinterested. Obviously, you like entertaining and you like the attention, motherfucker. But like, I don't know, dude. A at that point, after the, oh, my Snapchat is banned. And I'm like, all right, bitch, bye. What the fuck are you talking about? That's not my problem. Move, ho. You do reply. It's very dry. Well... Instagram has a really stupid feature that makes it so that once you've replied to someone's DMs once, you can't remove their ability to personally message you. I hate you that. Block them. They you have can... that shit on Twitter, bro. On Twitter, that is the worst. Not be following them. You can delete them from your inbox. They can still message you and pop up in your notifications. I'm showing an example on screen of my DM continuing to pop up on my alt account just to show how it works. Obviously, given I replied to Amanda back in 2020 when I had a much smaller community, she was stuck in my inbox for the rest of time. You can temporarily delete someone from your inbox and it deletes all of your message history to them for you, but they can still message you with now a blank DM history. So at one point, wanting her to stop DMing me, I swiped her out of my inbox multiple times. It's actually completely provable that I did do this. I'm showing a video of my Instagram DMs to Amanda now, where they start in December of 2021, much later than her original DMs. Because you can't delete other people's individual messages and you can only delete entire conversations, this proves 100% that I was trying to delete her ability to message me in 2021. Like, it also bitch, shows the problem. The, the only messages that I can see from Amanda were from December 2021 onward. I had no context or recollection of her original messages to me that made it clear that she was a really big fan. I don't remember everyone that messages me, who they are, where I know them from, so on. She messaged me from her personal Instagram, had no connections to any fan accounts, didn't send me any more fan messages, and she had DM'd me many times talking about content creation and streaming. Some Just of which Revan. she deleted. Thank you. She seemed very normal, friendly, and implied strongly that she was overage. What I thought about her age doesn't matter that much because nothing inappropriate happened, but it does matter to show my mindset because I don't go around befriending underage girls or people that are obsessed with me or my content. To the best of my knowledge, she was neither. Continuing with the transcript, now we get to the very end, which was our first real conversation. This one was about music, which makes sense. It's something I'm really passionate about. At the time, I was working on a song called Trust Issues and some other random music projects. And in the middle of us talking about music, I gave her my Snapchat. I said, add me on Snapchat. And she said, yikes, this is where it gets weird see the, the there's a dynamic chat there's a dynamic between um streamer viewers bro it's it's almost like it's it's unintentional grooming whether you think so or not you understand this is just weird shit okay because there's a there's like a dynamic with, with streamers bro okay or like anything as a viewer you already look up to them you know what i mean you you're they're on a pedestal that streamer's on a pedestal already so that streamer or content creator whoever the fuck has that like that dynamics already there they have that power like that there's a power dynamic in between that you feel me so at, at a certain point if you keep on entertaining it you're taking advantage of it it's weird you understand the snapchat this is where it gets weird.
Sure thing, just added you. I was sharing music snippets with a bunch of people at the time, and as we were talking about music, I wanted to share them with her. And I'm obviously not going to send snippets of a new song over Instagram. Now, I've pretty much always used Snapchat as one of my main forms of communication. It was actually the first social media I ever got because a friend of mine wanted- None of that matters, bro. You're adding a viewer on, on Snapchat. That's just weird. Not going to lie, the effort he's going to go to try and prove uh, shit to be true and false, it's exhausting. Well, yeah, it's like a huge video to like- kind of exonerate Start himself streak with me and it's something is that, I is that the word absolve from blame oh my god holy shit who the fuck am i bitch i just said exonerate 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 who the fuck am i holy shit i'm fucking smart y'all are dumb dude oh my i'm using ex exonerate i'm using four syllable words mm -hmm. stop fucking Playing with me, stop playing with me, smart. To start a streak with me. And it's something I started using a lot more when I became faceless on YouTube. Because yeah, stuff is deleted. You don't have to stress over people analyzing or leaking everything you say. And for me, even for something as simple as a picture of my cat, people used to zoom into my cat's eyes to look at the reflection to Yikes. try and dox me. This was not uncommon at all. So of course I felt much more comfortable using Snapchat during this period, especially with people that I wasn't great friends with, but Something. even with my best friends. Now let's go over her actual claims in detail. Amanda claims that after I added her on Snapchat on January 17th, 2022, that we started sexting. She showed that her birthday when she would turn 18 is on February 17th, Yikes. exactly a month later. She claims that we sexted from around the 17th of January, the day I added her on Snapchat, to the 10th of February, and then that it stopped. She is said that proof? while she was still underage, we exchanged nudes. Her evidence of this was two photos of, supposedly me, from after she was 18, complimenting her. Her final important claim was that she traveled to Orlando in August, and that was- Still, that's- is that not grooming? Supposedly me, but is that you? He needs to clarify if that's him or not. From after she was 18, complimenting her. Her final important claim was that she traveled to Orlando in August, and that we planned to meet up and have sex. And I just want to make sure that I blatantly deny this before continuing. None of this is true. And now I'm going into more detail. Now, unfortunately, because she didn't provide any proof of these things, it's difficult to be specific about some of the things she claimed. It's much easier to completely make up that something happened than it is to prove that it never did. Like if I said right now, prove to me 100% that you never sexted a specific person that you've had on Snapchat at any point, it would be impossible to do. But what I can true. do is lay out all the inconsistencies, talk about the proven lies, okay. the specifics, point out questions that were never asked, and provide all of the evidence that I have. And I believe that luckily, that's way more than enough. So first, I want to talk about the timeline. Every contact we've ever had with each other before January 17th is the Instagram DMs, which I just read to you, which are now all public in their entirety. What are you hunting, bro? What are you hunting? It's easier to fucking to be like, oh my God, this person did this to me without zero proof than fucking, is this dreamy? Yeah. The description of this video, other than the messages that she deleted. She claims that sexing started around January 17th and that sexing stopped February 10th. So from the 17th to maybe February 10th is the time frame where we were sexting. So even if we say that it started a couple weeks before it stopped, you'd have to believe that every message you've just seen, we went from that to sexting days later in 2022 before my face reveal. Even if you want to give her the maximum benefit of doubt and say that she confused the timeline, she turned 18 on the 17th, one week after she claimed the sexting stopped. So there's not much leeway. Secondly, we can talk about her Twitter. She tweeted out defending me from hate on my face reveal 10 days before the allegations and was liking my tweets, including a subscriber milestone tweet two days before she tweeted her allegations. With the timing of the face reveal and her allegation, my belief is that there was a lot of hate and that it's easy to get spiteful and join in on a hate train. I had ignored multiple of her Instagram DMs and Snapchat messages in recent months, Yikes. and I had also made a new Snapchat that I didn't add her on. I still used my old Snapchat occasionally, but I just rarely responded. That's my only real explanation for why she flipped so quickly from being publicly positive to me to lying about me, but I guess I'll never really know. Thirdly, the only photo she showed as proof- Not out of, out of the realm of possibility. Not out, not out of the I mean, hey, I'm gonna be honest, you know, a lot of bitches are spiteful, you know what I mean? Motherfuckers do be plotting. It's, it's not out the realm of possibility, okay? That I groomed her were both pictures from, based on her own evidence, after she was 18, meaning even if we give her the benefit of doubt and assume everything- Still grooming, weirdo. Like, what are you talking about? This is something I don't agree with, though. Buddy, if you're talking to someone that's underage, you add them on Snapchat when they're underage, and then when they're when they're of age now, and then you'd be like, wow, you're so hot. That's still, is that still not grooming? That's still weird. Like, what are we talking about here? That's like, like you're, you're low key, just like, <laughs> wait, hold on, oh, wow, you're 17, okay, just add me on Snapchat. We'll talk about music. Oh, you're 18 now. Hey, wow, you're so hot. You know what I fucking mean? Like, dude, what are you talking about? That's, that's just like weird shit. That's like weird uncle shit. You understand? She's provided is real and truthful. She was 18 when these messages would have been sent, and I had no context to the fact that she was more than a small streamer. But on top of that, I unblocked her Snapchat, went through our Snapchat chats, and couldn't find either of the messages that she was talking about. Uh -oh. I also downloaded all of our snapchat logs using the snapchat data tool which she can do as well and neither of the compliments that she showed were in the logs now honestly this is pretty useless information because there's almost no messages in the logs at all but it's still extremely weird that she was asked for these
these logs many times. Ooh, 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 hold on, no, hold on, no. Is he clearing that shit up? Hold on. Times. It takes five minutes to download, and she never did it probably because it doesn't support what she was saying. On top of those things, from everything she had told me, she was 19, and we had no inappropriate contact. The context of these messages would be a 22-year-old creator calling a 19-year-old streamer gorgeous on a birthday post while giving her a gift card as a birthday present. Finally, she said that we planned to meet up and have sex in August when she was in Orlando. It was suggested that we meet up and have sex. I was either going to have him come to my the resort I was at, or he was going to pick me up and bring him to his house. First of all, this was before my face reveal. I did not leave my house. I was massively paranoid. I was not meeting up with a random person I had just met two months before my face reveal, let alone at a resort, which is what her claim was. I'm gonna go ahead and play a phone call with my mom just to give you some perspective from before my face reveal. How many times do you think that I left the house between 2021 and my face reveal? Wow, I don't know, three? Maybe four. What did I leave the Yikes. house for whenever I left the house? Um, well, I know you went to the dentist three times, and then I think one other time was when you had the um, kidney stones. <laughs> so oh, yeah, you're the hospital. ER. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think those were the only times you left the house. And we were worried because we didn't want you to call 911 because we didn't even know if they would come because of all the fake um, swattings and everything. So I had to come get you and take you That's to the true. hospital. <laughs> so it was probably five times that you left. Okay, what was the process when we did leave the house? What was the process like? Crazy. I pulled into the garage, shut the garage door. You would get in the back seat, way back of the van with a blanket over yourself and you wouldn't come out from under the blanket until we were on the highway. I was a little paranoid. <laughs> a little bit. What was the inside of the house like? What, what precautions did we take? Oh my gosh, it was like a cave. Um, every window was covered, even the high windows that were arches. We had to like tape curtains over Yikes. them so that even a drone wouldn't be able to see. It probably smell wild in that motherfucker, dude. I'm not going to lie to you. You can't crack a window or nothing. Bitch. Smell like dirty hot dog water in that bitch. And everything was covered. And he just fucking building his ass off playing Minecraft. Oof. Yeah, so we had the, the banker come to the house because he wouldn't go out of the house, but we needed to set up bank accounts. Whatever it was that needed to happen, we were the ones that did it so that Yikes. he didn't have to go out. That's actually okay. sad. Thank you, Mom. Here. That's so sad, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, my fucking God. That's kind of depressing. She was given a script. <laughs> Yo, don't make a joke. You're gonna fucking piss off that one dumbass in jet. <laughs> Why would you say that? Why would you say paid actor? Why would you say script? <laughs> fucking idiot. You're welcome. I love you. Love you too. <laughs> Bye. Again, as you can probably tell, what she claims definitely didn't happen. Either she's telling the truth and her story makes sense or she's not and it doesn't. Now, some other stuff to note. After her allegations, she- Hi. Hi. She deleted a lot of evidence. She unliked a lot of tweets she had liked. She deleted replies of hers on Twitter and TikTok that hurt her credibility or contradicted what she was saying. She deleted Instagram DMs to me and only got caught because she accidentally showed them in an old oh. TikTok of hers. And that's all Thank completely you. factual and documented. Later, she was bragging on TikTok, calling people doubting her jealous, saying, I'm gorgeous and oh. my favorite YouTuber thought so too. It's giving jealous. Not treating the serious situation that she claimed happened seriously at all. Yikes. People also found old tweets of hers where she was replying very inappropriately to other streamer friends of mine. She was even banned in one of my friend's chats for saying she wanted to sit on his face. These accounts weren't linked to her Instagram, so Yikes. I had no idea about them. She also replied to fans of mine questioning her with slurs. She also said that she was gonna lie and tell me that she was 18, but that she changed her mind, I guess. So I was going to lie and tell him I was 18. She said she would provide proof of the fact that she told me she was 17 and that I still sexed her tomorrow. But I didn't, and that proof will come out tomorrow. And guess what? She never posted proof because Yikes. this never happened. She tweeted out thanking people for all the support and claimed at the end that I deleted our DMs right as she tweeted this and specifically said my end too, which means her DMs too. Well, I just want to point out that this is a she is batshit. It's official. Yeah, no, this is wild. Impossible. There's not a single mainstream social media platform that lets you delete both people's messages. And we only had each other on Instagram and Snapchat where you can't do that on either. She claimed that she was laughing and was going to prove people wrong with pictures of my penis, to which again, Never happened. Yeah. Lastly, she tweeted saying that she's getting the law involved and going to the oh, mother chat. Shut your, shut your ass up. Police said she's going to put me in jail unless I confess. She said she would Yikes. provide more evidence. She didn't. She said she would upload her Snapchat logs. She didn't. She said she would sue me. She didn't. 
And now I'm making this video. She provided absolutely no proof for any of her claims and said that she didn't have any because she wanted her favorite YouTuber to trust her, which Yikes. could be a completely valid argument, except the pictures that she posted were from a second phone, meaning there was no risk of me knowing. She was taking pictures of compliments from a second phone, but has no evidence of anything sexual, has no evidence of us planning to meet up and have sex, apparently from after these pictures were secretly taken, has no evidence of a singular inappropriate message from me or her, or even anything at all that isn't a story reply from Snapchat's Yikes. story page of all your friends. What's more likely? She happens to have no evidence of anything she's claiming, even from things she claimed happened after she was taking pictures secretly using a second phone, or she doesn't have any evidence because it didn't happen. She factually deleted and hid messages. She factually lied about me deleting messages that I didn't. She called people doubting her jealous of her, was banned from streamers' chats before this for posting sexual things, and she lied about having specific pieces of evidence that she never provided mm. because they don't exist. If she's willing to factually lie, cover up, and hide things, how can you trust anything else she says as being representative of the truth? Mm. Lastly, there's more. Hold on one second. Once again, she said she was going to take legal action. She then tweeted a picture of the inside of a police station and also said she'll come back with more evidence to be patient, that it's a process, and that it could be days. And that's her last tweet. It's been almost a year and a half now. Obviously, nothing happened. I waited and waited. Then... I got impatient, so I asked my legal team to look more into it. They got all of her information, and after filing many requests, they couldn't find anything. So, annoyed and still impatient, I asked them to get more specific. And after a lot of digging, my legal team was able to track down exactly where this picture is from based on the colors of the walls, the cameras, and a plaque outside the door. Then had someone go to the police station and requested specific records from this specific police station. And uh -huh. checked every record they could criminal and civil I didn't find anything under either one of those names and there was no information at all I was not even in their system so you're not listed in my system at all so if you want to believe everything she said you mm. have to believe either one of these two things either one she lied this photo is fake she never filed anything mm. and if she's lying about that why would she not be lying about literally everything else or two the picture is real and whatever story she told didn't even meet the minimum required standard of proof to file a single piece of paperwork that my legal team could find in over a year and a half I also sent a photocopy of my driver's license identification to this specific police station, a copy of Amanda's information, and let them know I was happy to answer any questions. To which, again, nothing ever happened. Not a single question. There was not a single case, accusation, or any- He kinda cooked. He played GeoGuessr. Oh my fucking God. He got that one dude, you know that one white dude that fucking, that could see like a lamppost and be like, that's, that's Indiana, Georgia. You know what I mean? Like some crazy shit. He got that motherfucker. Bro, that is crazy anything substantial enough to even have me in any system. And inevitably, when after this video, Along. she makes another thread or another post, reiterating the same lies that she has already said, or promising even more things that she- So what if she just comes out, bro? Okay? Like, he kind of cleared this bitch. I'm not gonna lie, he cleared this bitch. She had zero proof. He, he aired that bitch out, right? But what if, just what if she was waiting for this one moment? And she was like, it's time. Boom! Big old dream dick straight on your timeline. Hey, buddy, does this- Look familiar, look at this motherfucker. And it's like in the same pose. You know that without yo, I'm gonna be honest, as a dude, you only got like probably two poses when you're taking a dick, bro. On God. You got like two poses. It's either it's either from the front down or you getting a motherfucking angle with that motherfucker poking up. So you got you got it in the frame. You feel me? You got it like in the frame, but from like a, the, the angle down. You see what I'm saying? And if it's the angle down of his dick dangle, oh, it's up, bro. It's done. It's done. You're gonna see dream like this, bro. Hold on, he gonna be like this, he gonna be like this. He gonna be like, he gonna be like yeah, you like that, girl. Girl, you like that? You like that? And then it's up, bro. And then it's uh, you. It, like that would be crazy. She waited for this one moment for this. You feel me? My fault. I'm. So we're getting out of my fault. I'm sorry. I, I know certain people don't like jokes and shit. She never follows through on. Go to the police or sue me. The standard of proof for you suing me is only proving that it's more likely than not that you're telling. You've done truth. this before, absolutely. Absolutely, bro. What, dude? I'm not gonna. I'm pretty sure I got catfish when I was in middle school. My dick is somewhere out there floating around. On God, on God, my dick is floating around somewhere, dude. I sent so many dick pics, dude. Understand? I was loose with my dick. I don't give a fuck. Like I. I'm gonna be honest, I have a catalog on my Snapchat with mad dick pics, bro. You know what I mean? With the with the fucking for your eyes only. I'm I think I got a, a nice looking pee, pee Okay, chat. My my pee, pee look nice. Okay, and I could admit that. My pee, pee look very pr I got pretty pee, pee Okay. And I was sending to all the bitches. I don't give a fuck. Okay. Don't don't get me wrong. I wasn't out here just like, hey, you wanna see my dick? No, 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 bro. It wasn't on that shit. You feel me? But like if a bitch wanted to see my dick, 
it's there for you. I got a whole album, baby. What you want? I got the motherfucker. What angle you want? What kind of lighting? I got I got it next to the fireplace. You want that? You feel me? My dick had pretty privilege. You see what I'm saying? I'm sorry. Anyways, I got catfished when I was in middle school. I swear to God. On the, on the app called Kick, C-I-K. Bro, bro, I got to be confident in my PP. Like, what are you talking about? It's my PP. It's mine. <laughs> Anyone want to see him? I got? No, just kidding. Chill out, bro. Chill out. We're going to have a fucking dream situation here. 51%. Come take my money. But she won't. Because if she does, they're not going to treat it like it's Twitter. She's going to have to address all the lies. She's going to have to address all the inconsistencies. She's going to have to address her weird comments, her false promises, her character. And most importantly, be held accountable in her real life for what she's saying. This isn't online drama. This is real life stuff. There are real victims that have been manipulated, abused, and taken advantage of. Amanda... You are hurting actual victims. You are diminishing the very real trauma that victims of grooming and abuse have gone through. You are making it harder for real victims of abuse to come forward. You are not a victim. Mm. You are not doing a good thing. No matter how- C Did I say C-I-K? I mean K-I-K. My fault. K-I-K. K-I-K was horrible. Kick was horrible? Bro, it wasn't that bad. He's kind of cooking her. Not gonna lie, he ate her up. Absolutely, bro. He kind of cooked her. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think, bro? No matter how terrible you think I am, or that the ends justify the means, you are hurting victims. Mm. Just in case this video isn't enough for you to realize that, check your mailbox. And that's all I have to say about these allegations. Now, before continuing- Damn. Damn, he said, check your mailbox. That bitch is getting sued. Oh my God, that bitch is getting sued. <laughs> Yo! Imagine finding out. Imagine finding out you're about to get sued with a YouTube video, bitch. Oh my god, Dream dropped a video. He said something about me. And then that motherfucker said, check your mail. But oh, it's up for you. It's up for you. Oh my god. He, he kind of went crazy. He kind of went crazy. The comeback, though. Yo, that is crazy. Deserve. She thought she was doing something. I'm not going to lie, bro. He kind of cooked her ass. Check your mailbox in the YouTube video. Imagine she runs to the mailbox right now and it's just like yeah buddy you're done you mean with other stuff i want to talk a little bit about what happened after these allegations after these allegations and after my face reveal i'll be honest i lost a lot of motivation i distanced myself from minecraft and i even thought about quitting and retiring of course it was pretty scary and i just wanted to be able to upload minecraft videos and have fun with my friends without worrying about people trying to ruin my life or attack my family or make up lies about yeah me. cloud after does that bro and doxing and fake allegations it really just felt not worth it anymore but also i had basically been stuck inside for the majority of the last four years so i just thought i'd step back for a little bit i traveled with my friends i met a lot of creators for the first time i worked on music had my tour and really just stepped back from my online life and i feel like during this time i really disappointed a lot of my friends and their fans as a result i didn't spend as much time on the finale of the dream smp as i should have i wasn't good at communicating about anything really including important stuff is he gonna address people. that that moaning snapchat bro when he was whimpering and shit i remember seeing that shit on twitter i wonder if he's gonna address that i went very inactive on everything and i pretty much isolated myself from most creators that weren't in my immediate circle there was a looming cloud over me and i felt bad talking to people because i didn't want to bring any negativity towards anyone Later on, I got pretty insecure about my creator friendships that weren't people that I was super close with before YouTube. And even though everyone that I was friends with was very supportive and had my back and would reassure me privately, I still couldn't help but worry that because there were people online spreading hateful things about me, that it would impact their view of me personally. At one point, I ended up making a massive mess by tweeting publicly about a problem that I had with Quackity because he wasn't replying to me for a while. We had both made translation mods and people were claiming that we were copying each other. It it was just a mess. I was 100% wrong with taking anything public. Anything that can be handled in private should be handled in private. And I've always had that belief. So the way that I handled it was totally screwed up. Yeah, I remember seeing his Minecraft beef. This was fucking stupid, dude. When it's XQC and Pokemon getting into this, though, it's fucking... Let me see. It's coming up soon, bro. I'm so excited for that. I'm not gonna lie. Leaking DMs is wild. Leaking DMs is absolute... Oh, it's right here. Oh, my God, bro. We got, we got some ways to go, but... Ooh. Who's XQC? XQC is probably the biggest, if not one of the biggest, uh, Twitch. Or now he's on Kick, Kick streamers, bro. You understand? He is, he is by far one of the biggest streamers. It was completely driven by fear and insecurity over my friendships, and it was not something that Quackity deserved at all. If Quackity didn't want to reply to me about it or wanted to ignore it, that was entirely within his right to do, especially given the awkward circumstances of everything. I'm extremely proud of everything Quackity has done with his project, the QSMP, and genuinely, he did it way better than I ever could have. It's incredible, and everyone really should go check it out. I should have focused completely on the good that came from it all and not let myself get stuck on trying to work something out as friends when he seemed perfectly fine working on his own thing with his own community. Again, there's a lot of things that can explain my mindset, but at the end of the day, I'm sorry to quack mm. in this community for creating unnecessary drama, and I hope that people can try and understand my mindset, where I was coming from, and that even if it doesn't seem like it, 
it's all from a place of love and care for my friends and the community. It was just an emotional time and I made a mistake. After that, obviously even more time passed and again, there was nothing new with the allegation. There was no updates. I talked to a lot of people for updated advice, lawyers, PR people, people with experience, and everyone told me that it's in my best interest to stay quiet. As time went on, I disagreed more and more and decided that I was gonna respond against their advice. So during a live stream, I mentioned that I was gonna respond soon and talked about the allegation a little bit. And of course, after this, clips of- Kick, you mean kick? Kick, C-I-C-K is a streaming platform kind of like Twitch. C-I-K is the messaging app that I got shut down a while ago. Clips of what I said were taken out of context. People were spreading far and wide that I admitted to grooming and a lot of other really impactful lies. And of course, because of this, a lot of people on Twitter took it as an opportunity to joke about me being a pedophile. And one of Yikes. those people was named Nicholas Cantu. If you don't know who that is, he's the voice actor for Gumball, Diego from Dora, and one of the turtles in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh no, I had it's a terrible this situation. experience in real life with this person, so I replied to him talking about it and defending myself. And this situation blew up. I don't think I've ever gotten more hate in my life. September 23rd, I went to a friend of mine. Which is Brooklyn. honestly insane when you think about it. Buddy, okay, he recorded Gumball saying a bunch of crazy shit. And then like, I'm talking, he was like, fuck you, like saying some crazy shit, right? Slurs, throwing slurs, talking crazy to the Uber driver, talking crazy to the mo to uh to what's it dream, bro? Bro, he was going wild, and then somehow he brought it to Twitter, and he's like, "Fuck you, that's why you're a piece of shit person." Look at this video, everybody, and then everybody was like, "Man, f you, dream motherfucker, shut your bitch ass up, bitch." I agree with Gumball, bitch. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen some shit like that. He was so drunk. I don't care. Like, chat, chat, chat. First of all, it, I don't care if you're drunk or not. If you say, what, what do they say? Drunk words or sober thoughts or some shit. I don't give a fuck how drunk you are. It does not excuse your actions, especially as a grown ass man. I don't care if you're neuro neurodivergent or not. I don't give a fuck about none of that, bro. Okay. I don't give a fuck about none of that, motherfucker. When you're drunk and you're saying some crazy shit, I don't mean nothing. You're still, uh, you're uh, fucking supposed to be accountable for your actions. Okay. Think about it like this. If I go punch your mom in the fucking mouth and I'm like, oops, sorry, I was drunk. No, motherfucker, I'm accountable for my actions. I punched her in her fucking mouth. Well, that's, or even like some some other actions. You feel me? This time it was just words. But the fact that I just seen all of Twitter collectively shit on Dream, even though like it was like, how is this even he's in a wrong right now? Like, how is he in a wrong is wild to me, bro. It's insane. A party in Austin, Texas. When I showed up, Nicholas Cantu was there. He was already drunk and was drinking. He was being very aggressive to me throughout the night. I didn't know him. This was my first time ever meeting him. Not and we were not bro. friends. Eventually, while on FaceTime to show his friends, he hit me out of nowhere. Again, this was my first time ever meeting him. I was there for another hour or so, and then when leaving the party, everyone decided to Uber together because it was late and there wasn't many of us there. Nicholas ended up in the front seat of the Uber that I was in, despite my apprehension. I thought, what's the worst that could happen? It's an Uber ride and there's other people there, so I wasn't worried. Little did I know. He ended up dropping his phone out of the Uber window in the middle of the highway, and after he got out to look for it, the police showed up and stopped him from looking because it was dangerous and dark. Eventually, the Uber driver convinced Nicholas to leave. Well, I want to promise you that I'm sober, so if you guys want to conduct a sobriety test. Hey, look, hey, we're, we, we're, we're about to head out. And after we left, the Uber driver was trying to give advice to Nicholas on the police, telling him that he could have been arrested, and Nicholas did not like what he had to say. He's not, uh, he wasn't, he was sober, he was having, he wasn't drunk, he was manic. That doesn't fucking change anything, bro. Like, what are we talking about here? That doesn't change anything. Okay, okay, so the, the backlash I seen on Twitter was people were like, oh my god, why would you drink with a minor? Why would you drink with someone that's whatever the fuck or some shit like that? But like, if he, okay, if he wasn't drunk and he was just having a manic episode, he's still being a fucking dick. Like, what are we talking about? And, and then Dream's not in a wrong because he didn't let him drink. But then he's not a minor though, or under the age of fucking uh, drinking or some shit. I don't fucking know, bro. Say. You're a you're a down syndrome. Uh, how far did you go on your education? Who cares? Of course, I started to get involved and argue with Nick, defending the Uber driver, and Nick did not like that at all. Either you're gonna be paralyzed or you're gonna be. Mama. Yeah, like I'm serious. Okay, man. And he was saying this, of course, after he had already assaulted me. While this was all happening, one of the other two people in the car with me that I also just met that night was recording it. He was aware of this, and he was actually the one that asked to be recorded. Thanks for recording, by the way. How long is this? But yeah, this YouTube video is going to be nuts. Subscribe to the Kanji Network. Tune your sets right there. The next day, Nicholas sent me a very nice DM saying that he was sorry for hitting me, that he was having a really rough night, and that he was high and drunk, and said that he was sorry for spreading false allegations that he knew nothing about, saying that he recognized it could ruin people's lives. He complimented me, called me humble, grounded, and a good human. I didn't accept this apology, but I, I moved on, and honestly, I felt kind of bad for him. 
I recognize that he was once a child actor and I feel like there's a lot of bad stuff in that industry. So I felt a little bit of sympathy. I hoped he would just learn from the mistakes he made that night and move on. But then of course, Nicholas started tweeting, spreading the same lies about me that he had uh -oh. already apologized for spreading and recognized could ruin people's lives. He was also wishing death upon me publicly in Twitter replies. And that's when I realized it wasn't just one bad night and people needed to know about this. After I shared my experiences with him, he denied everything. He DM'd me saying I was lying, saying that if there wasn't video proof, it's all lies. He tweeted denying it all, which he deleted. And then he tweeted lying more about the situation, but also admitting to some stuff while underplaying it. He blatantly Yikes. lied about the fact that he tipped the Uber driver when he didn't. He blatantly lied about me sending unsolicited pics to people. He also deleted that tweet almost immediately after. He blatantly lied about the reason he hit me and claimed I called the girl a whore and got slapped for it, which again was later recanted, but not after millions of people had already seen those lies. Nicholas tried DMing one of the people that was in the Uber that night with us to try and get them on his side as a witness. That caused the person who I didn't know at all to message me and tell me that they had videos of him being horrible from that night and that they don't like that he's pretending to be innocent. I asked them if they'd be willing to send me the I'm video. I'm not defending so dream. Up. I just hate misinformation. Abs absolutely, bro. I think I think if you if you get all the information from both sides, bro, you know what I mean? And you form your own opinion on it. You know what I mean? But like, I don't like when motherfuckers take misinformation, say it as fact, especially like earlier in the stream when motherfuckers were just saying like out of, like out of pocket shit. Oh, he he off on a girl and the girl wore a dress i'm 100 sure about it but i think i saw it on twitter like what the fuck are we talking about motherfuckers spread misinformation like crazy bro like shut the fuck up sit the fuck down listen to what the fuck is going on bro take two sides of the motherfucking story you know what i mean find the fucking middle ground whatever, whatever fuck. form your own shit i don't like that misinformation and all that bullshit obviously this fucking gumball person i don't know again i don't know how they flipped it on dream like he was a bad person i completely like i seen this shit on twitter and i was confused i was like what the fuck is going on here i never seen it and that's that's when I, matter of fact we were streaming when i streamed this shit bro i streamed this and i was like dude honestly i would hate to have that bro dream i feel like twitter logic it's not even twitter logic bro dream has so much clout that everybody's just like shut the f up mother or shut the f up he's always gonna be like that bro it's always gonna be like that for him and it just sucks i would fucking hate that especially when you're actually in the right motherfuckers like that just sucks dude my story since he was denying it and lying and they told me that he was threatening them to make sure they didn't give me the videos after i ended up finally getting the videos I posted them and needed to defend myself against the lies that he was telling and wanted to share the proof. I also posted screenshots of texts between me and the Uber driver, confirming that he had blatantly lied and didn't even tip the Uber driver. After I posted this, Nicholas went silent, deleted his tweets, and hasn't said anything publicly. Yikes. People still think that I lied and faked the Uber driver's text or many other lies that were falsely spread by Nicholas or other people online. So I got in contact with the Uber driver from that night. I interviewed him and I'll let him speak for himself to help clear some things. Oh up. shit. Hey, what's the worst that can happen? It's an Uber drive. And oh. Then, yeah, well, yeah, what's, yeah, what's the worst that can what's happen? What's the worst that can happen? It happened. Either you're gonna be paralyzed or you're gonna be dead. Like, I'm serious. What's going on, man? This is our Uber driver, who happens to be one of the highest rated Uber drivers in all Dang, of Texas. He got he the motherfucking his recollection of what scripted, happened. Scripted, so bro. He brought the whole fucking Uber driver on here. Scripted. Your y'all are bugging right now, bro. Y'all are bugging. He's out. He's bringing receipt. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest. Dream deserved all that extra hate he was getting because he was going back and forth with motherfuckers. This is all you gotta do. Chat. Don't go back and forth. If you ever get caught in controversy, don't go back and forth with motherfuckers. Drop a fucking hour long YouTube video on these motherfuckers bro what what drop an hour-long video exposing all that and it's up when i picked you guys up you know he had a lot of energy he was wild like putting his head outside filming the phone dropped out of the car when the cop showed up the cop came up to the car at first and was talking to him and the way that he was speaking to the cop he was speaking like down on the cop and I'm like, man, like, you need to be quiet because you're going to go to jail if you keep talking to the cops like that. As soon as I said that, not even 20 seconds, the cop came and he was like, you get out the car, you're going to jail. I'm trying to save you from going to jail because I don't want nobody to go to jail, period. He kept saying something about like IQ, like he felt like he was better. And I was like, he nobody brought a whole court witness. <laughs> you're an idiot, bro. IQ. There's a lot of people with high IQs in jail right now. So what are you going to tell him? You're going to talk to him and say that you're a child star while you're in jail. So I was like, I'm trying to help you out. I don't want you to go to jail, even after you're acting crazy and wild, which most Uber drivers would have left you. You never said anything negative towards him while he was saying all this stuff. The majority of the stuff didn't make it on the tape. I think he's he was going through a lot of other things besides mm. just being drunk. And the thing is, it, it doesn't really matter what he was on, what he was going through, the way he was acting. It was unacceptable. 50 or 60 percent. I may be wrong about the number, but something like that of all violence has alcohol in it. So if that was the case, 
All these people would be getting away with it. Like y'all kept mm -hmm. saying, I'm sorry. Like we just met him. You're gonna be forgotten like the dust in the sand when you're in the Sahara and there's hundred million, thousand billion sand particles. You're gonna be one of those and I'm gonna be a statue erected in gold. Yeah, yeah, he went. He went all into the uh, Egyptian king and the <laughs> like. He's real creative. Yeah, did he? Did he ever? Did he ever tip you anything? No, no. That was another lie. Well, I don't know why he said that. And you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't even matter about the tip or anything like that. Don't Tight. say it if you're not going to do it. Mm. And don't say it at all. I wasn't begging you guys, you guys for a tip or anything like that. Man, it was an eventful night. I don't know why a lot of people think that you were the one that was doing all these things and making all this stuff up, and you wanted to do all this. I was like, he was the one that was trying to stop everything the most. I posted like literally just like two screen caps of text from you and um, everybody was saying they were fake. It was one of the messages where you said like, there needs to be more people like you in the world or something. And, I, and they were like, when would somebody ever say that? Because they didn't experience you in that manner, right? Mm. Those are my real words. And I did feel that way. So I'm letting you guys know right now, all those text messages, that was me saying it, Dream did mm. make the situation better. Everybody coming at Dream, that's not how it went down. It was nothing like that. And now you're telling me how you got hit and it showed me who you are. The first impression of somebody is a lasting impression. And you were nothing but respectful since you got in the vehicle. Mm. And you tried to de-escalate everything that was going on. All the people in the back, Nicholas, if you are listening, really do some deep diving in yourself and figure out what the real issue was. Do a lot of soul searching mm. because you are intelligent because I could tell some of your comebacks and what were you saying, but the way you were acting was more of a cry for help. Whatever you're going through, you got to fight and you got to get some help. Don't mm. fight other people. Fight what you're going through. At the end of the day, mm. I know we all make bad decisions. Go ahead, Terrell. Talk to him. He kind of spitting. You have to learn the lesson from it. And this was just a bad decision that you made and just learn from it. And all the different YouTubers and all the different people that were coming in about the situation. I do understand the entertainment part of it, right? And it's just a lot of seen a lot of memes and everything, but I was reading a lot of comments. He was saying this, or he was saying that, or it doesn't make sense. All that stuff doesn't mean anything if you were not there. It's just speculation. And if somebody older is trying to help you guys out, my <laughs> advice is for you guys to listen. That's, that's it. That's all you have to do. But you don't have to be negative towards them. And we have to stick together because there's so many things that keep us apart. You're better than me. Let someone talk to me like that in my motherfucking car. You got me fucked up, bitch. I'm like, get the fuck out of my car before I give you this motherfucking hot sauce. Get the fuck out of here. What? I'm, I'm kick. I'm opening. I'm reaching across, opening the door, and then kicking that motherfucker out of my car and then driving off on the highway. I don't give a fuck. You better walk. You better, and you dropped your phone. You better go find it, bitch, and, and get another Uber. Fuck out of here. Someone said, I think the issue people had with Dream was that he waited to post the video. I mean, okay, 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 okay. See, just from at least from my pov right if someone was an asshole to me and there's a video of him being an asshole to me you know what i mean for for or asshole to everybody for no fucking reason saying all these fucking slurs right i i think because uh, people were like oh it's blackmail or whatever fuck it's not blackmail bro like what are you talking about dude if, if someone was being an asshole and you know or asshole and you know there's a video and then you see him on twitter being an asshole and, and spreading lies about you motherfucker what i'm gonna go be like yo you still got that video let me go ahead and expose this dumb motherfucker real quick i don't think it's blackmail at all bro you know what i mean it's not like he was holding on to him be like i'm just gonna wait i'm gonna wait and see and no bro it's like what what is he gonna do post that video and be like hey this is gumball and he's an asshole you know what i mean like what, what would that solve what, that ain't gonna do nothing bro you know what i mean i mean, I've, i see it more as like a defense it's like bro you're coming at me you're coming at my livelihood you're gonna spread lies on twitter acting like they're facts motherfucker here's a video of you being an asshole and a piece of shit you know what i mean it's more it's more so uh self-defense exactly i think it's, it's less blackmail more so self-defense you feel me because think about it like this if i had ops right and if i had if i had ops right and they talking shit and they talking they talking out their mouth on ig live talking about something like fuck you pussy you don't be on the block blah blah blah, blah right i'll be like what here's a video of you shitting yourself while we was jumping you pussy shut up you know what i mean that's not blackmail it's just self defense you you started running your mouth you know what i mean here's a video of you of you embarrassing yourself you know what i mean you shitting on yourself and, and getting fucking your face stomped in, in the pavement you feel me you see what i'm saying right just like if you look at it it's the the dream and the voice for for uh gumball how about you and nicholas have a sit down with me we talk all the issues and all the mm. problems out and we can show people how bringing things together from a negative to a positive i like and this guy bro and see how that spreads it's in the universe Amazing, man. Well, thank you so I much. I like that, bro. I really appreciate you coming on.
He's a good spirit, dude. I, I like him. I posted a longer version of this interview on my second channel, if you'd like more context. We talked for a long time. Now, before I show you the most insane hair loss inducing they I have ever seen on Twitter that took place after I posted this video of him, I need to reiterate a couple facts. One, I just met Nicholas. He was already drunk when I met him. Two, the party was not my party. I did not provide alcohol to anyone. Three, I did not know how old Nicholas was. And here's a video of what Nicholas said after I found out his age and critiqued him for drinking in front of the cops. There's a document. I personally haven't read it, but Twitter and some of my friends, shut the fuck up. You already like, shut the fuck up. You're prefacing some stupid shit. You're literally saying stupid shit and prefacing it with, oh, I hate that. 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 How about you go read it for yourself and then come back to me with some fucking, ooh, ooh, timed out for saying some stupid shit. Shut up. Stay in the corner. One minute time out. Shut the fuck up do your own research on some shit bro why are you a narc pedophile or i was not the one recording and i only posted the video because he was lying and saying unless there's video proof it didn't happen so yeah now that that's clarified enjoy dream did what no way they're gonna do a whole edit he was getting dragged on twitter bro He was getting dragged on Twitter. What is this? Neurodivergent people and LGBT community giving Nicholas Cantu the permission to call dream slurs. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> God, give me the power of smack you with the power of God. Swap. Has, has, has. The, fuck, the fuck is that, bro? I'm gonna go suck some dick just so I could call people slurs. F on God, dude. If that's how it works, fuck it. I'm about to go find the nearest dick to suck just so I could. Oh, nah, fuck that. I want my card, bro. I'm getting my card. What? Motherfucker, I'm collecting cards out here. Fuck that. On God, dude. Kenji, low. What? Kenji, no. What the f you mean, no? Kenji, no. So what? I can't claim it. I can't claim it. I can't reclaim a, a fucking a slur that motherfuckers used against me and my, and my community if I go suck a dick. No. Oh, fuck yourself, dude. You ain't gonna tell me what the fuck I can say and do. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go watch. I'm gonna come back saying the craziest shit on my live stream. And what you gonna say? I'm gonna record myself sucking a dick so there's proof too. Fuck you guys. So you gave a minor alcohol? 20. <laughs> you gave a minor alcohol? Jesus Christ. They're sending death threats to him. I think people people just don't like Dream and they'll use any excuse to shit on him. You feel me? That sucks, dude. As you can see, it got insane. Tweets doxing me and my friends and family got tens of thousands of likes. I have never seen that in my life. So I just want to talk very briefly about how serious doxing and swatting can be. It's a common thing for people to say that I don't think doxing is serious. In a clip that got a lot of attention from a stream of mine a while ago, I said that if you have seven followers on Twitter, you shouldn't stress over being doxed. I don't stand by that, and I didn't mean to minimize doxing at all. I had just said before that, that if you dox people, you are not a part of my community, that I don't support you, and that it's disgusting. It can happen to anyone, and it can be serious to anyone. I was just trying to make the point that it's less likely to happen to somebody that's smaller, because people have less reasons to target them. Them, and that if they were targeted, they had less reason to actually follow through on anything. But Bro. it's just not something that I should have said or something I should have explained as it made it seem Dude, like I'm not going to lie. My first time, my first death threat ever, this dude was dressed up like a fucking uh, stormtrooper that didn't like fully load in. He had like some white fucking armor on, like a fucking baseball helmet with, I don't know what the fuck, dude. Phone books taped to him. And then his weapon was like a like a tire iron with like a, a pencil taped to it or some shit. I swear to God. And like a hammer at the end you guys are laughing it's literally doctor's profile picture on discord matter of fact let me go show you so you guys don't think i'm fucking lying what the fuck did you do to make him that mad i talk shit on his little anime fucking girlfriend uh what's it called dude these these little v2 motherfuckers are weird dude like you if you be like yo like i'll say some shit like hey hey uh little anime bitch anime v2 bitch can you not say racist slurs to to people and then and then their fucking community will come in and just be like don't talk to my queen like that you
You know what I mean? Like, that's how it is, bro. Anyway, look, 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 chat, look. This, this is how, what he looked like. He has, like, fucking, fucking, I don't even know what this is. Ceramic white. I told you, he looked like a stormtrooper that didn't fully load in, bro. I don't know what the, I don't know what the f*** you call that. Anyway, that's Doctor's profile picture. I show Doctor, and he's like, hey, I'm making that my profile picture. Fucking dick. That was my first death threat ever, chat. So imagine, imagine waking up and you just see that shit next to you. Yeah, buddy, I'm cooked. It's over. He's gonna fucking put that screwdriver through me, or whatever the fuck was on his, his shit. My fault. Play the video. Supporting doxing when I just wasn't at all. I have all oh hell no you should have seen his whole he had a whole outfit he had like a skirt fucking flaps and shit yo i'm telling you right now one kick i'm sending him he's done he's gonna be so off balance he's like a big ass turtle he's not getting off his back dude i'm gonna spartan kick the fuck out of that man you understand he's not getting up it's over for him that little face mask i'm stomping his fucking like what are we talking about here dude skirt with that bro he had like a skirt it was like like you know gladiators how they have that armor skirt shit it was like that bro it was fucking insane if you've seen half my death threat dms it's wild chat i don't be crying about it like that on twitter because it's just like whatever to me but yeah it's it's crazy. That motherfucker eat glue. Huh? Honestly, I don't know who to believe. The Uber driver could be not actually the Uber driver and I find it strange he didn't elaborate on the police situation. Though he also might be right sunk in G panic. No, definitely. You can hear it in the same voices. It's the same exact voice uh, from the fucking Uber driver. So whatever the fuck. Yo, y'all so skeptical. You know what? Sure. If it's a fake person, sure. Even if it's a fake person or not, or if it's a fake Uber driver or not, right? It still stands that the gumball dude was being a fucking dickhead. And also Dream did not have any, like gun that gumball person is his own man. Dream Dream didn't know him. He got to a party where he didn't fucking know him. He got punched in his fucking mouth, right? Or slapped or whatever the fuck. Got in an Uber with him and then he started getting berated by this gumball person, okay? The story on Twitter, at least from what I saw, was people saying, oh my God, you gave alcohol to a minor. He got there when he was drunk. Oh my God, you're recording him when he was having a manic episode. Still doesn't excuse the fact that he was saying slurs and, and being disrespectful to the Uber driver and Dream. You know what I mean? Think about it. If you're out in public and someone just started going off on you, ballistic calling you a bunch of names and talking mad shit on you in public doesn't matter who the fuck they are if they're drunk or not you would hold them fucking accountable yay or nay like what are we talking about here dude you know what i mean so it doesn't matter if the uber driver is real or is not real it, like i don't think that matters at all bro you know what i mean out with Nickelodeon and i doubt he would lie about it 17 year old i feel like dream would dream would lose a lot more credibility if he got some, a fake uber driver you feel me he brought receipts and dream is innocent but don't put yourself in a situation to get in trouble by hanging out with Nickelodeon voice actors and 17-year-old girls about to turn 18. Use your brain. Um, check your DMs. What happened? Oh, we have full pictures. Look, look at this. Look at this glorious bastard right here. He has nails. Look at this. He has nails out of his... Who took this picture? His mother? This is my first death threat ever, bro. He has, he has fucking nails coming out of his, uh, his shins and fucking uh forearm what the fuck is going on here dude i'm telling you though like he's on his back what is he <laughs> look at that weapon what the fuck is going on here dude he looks acoustic he might be you never know dude he looks dangerous for sure like who took this picture get this motherfucker off my goddamn move bro okay bet yeah for sure i think i think even um adding adding a 17 year old on snapchat is already crazy that's already wild to me you know what i mean but also he came with mad evidence disproving that there was any and any sexual um any sexual like uh sexting or any of that and everything that she claimed uh had no bearing to be honest with you or at least from what i've seen in this video so um is it weird to add a 17 year old absolutely would it be grooming if those screenshots were real absolutely but he came with chat logs and data saved and shit showing that it wasn't real you know what i mean so if she's fabricating screenshots she could fabricate anything you know what i mean so i don't i don't i don't know i don't know yeah my fault let me play this they follow through on anything but it's just not something that i should have said or something i should have explained as it made it seem like i was supporting doxing when i just wasn't at all i have always said that doxing is extremely serious wadding is extremely serious and i don't think people even realize how serious it's not just haha funny send a pizza to someone's house it's a oh, i love hungry howies for my yo f that let someone oh my god chat if you ever get my address and you send me pizza please pay for it i would take some hungry howies dude oh my god i love hungry howies it's so good wasn't at all i have always said that doxing is extremely serious wadding is extremely serious and i don't think people even realize how serious it's not just look at that hungry how oh my god just ha -ha, some hungry how we sit at someone's house it's attempted identity theft for my family members and friends credit cards being signed up for in people's names Jeez. fans or people who dislike you showing up at your house or your family's house to try and break 
in, trackers being put on your family members' cars, people showing up at your little sister's job, SWAT teams being called to you in your family members' houses, bomb threats and the FBI having to make sure you're okay, people calling your 80-year-old grandma pretending to be you and terrorizing her. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> Uh, that's not that's not funny Kenji why are you laughing cuz I'm just saying how devious do your ops need to be to call your grandma and talk crazy to her <laughs> like imagine just imagine calling someone's grandma and be like yeah stupid bitch just know just know I know you bitch yeah, come fuck you up. Like, what the fuck is wrong with people, That's bro? all stuff that has happened to me, my family, and my friends. <laughs> They're not devious. This isn't just that you don't like Dream. It's not just me whose life you're putting at risk and who you're harassing. You don't you're want going that. after an 80-year-old woman who has done nothing to you. It's not just me you're hurting when you make up lies or spread horrible things. It's the 50 employees I have who also have families and lives. It's all of my friends and anyone that's ever been associated with All right, bro, we get it. Move on. It's my family, my grandparents, and most importantly, actual victims who have gone through traumatic things and that's not even talking about the stuff that hasn't happened to me but has happened to other people pets and people being shot by police officers during swattings people breaking in with a gun to kill a youtuber they don't like Holy it's incredibly shit. serious and it's not okay that wasn't even the end of the craziness though yeah your grammy's getting a call buddy it's up for her just know i'm gonna I'm start off real nice and i'm be like hey uh, how you doing this is uh this is your internet go fuck yourself old lady yeah get the fuck out of here little bitch and i'm, I'm gonna put a voice changer on it i'm like oh the demons are coming the demons are coming you know what I mean? She's gonna be praying mad hard tonight, dude. Just wait on it. That was the beginning. Because then, during the midst of all the Nicholas drama, someone tweeted out this. Accusing me of sexting a 16 slash 17 named Jamie. Because I was currently the internet punching bag, and it was proof that the punching was justifiable, it was spread very quickly, without a lot of questions being asked. Before I break it down, I want to immediately say that this is not true. I did not groom anyone, I did not groom Jamie, and I would never be inappropriate with someone underaged. When they posted this allegation, attached was a video that, of course, went viral. It was a video from another phone of a Snapchat being opened, supposedly from Dream, that had moaning in the background and a very sexual caption. This is the Hell clip no. in its entirety without audio. How you gonna leave the audio yep. out? Don't worry, I'ma get it, chat. We gonna hear this motherfucker moaning. I don't know, that's a pinnacle part of the, the shit that we need. You got me fucked up. Investigator Kenji here. YouTube Kenji, what? Kenji, no. What the f Hell no, motherfucker. I'm getting my motherfucking clip. Uh, Dream Jamie moaning. I'm scared. We gotta, we gotta see what's good, bro. Uh, oh, here it is right here. <laughs> okay, well, that's it. All right, just so we have some context on what we talking about here, okay? Kenji, please, what the fuck are you mad at me for, motherfucker? We gotta make sure we we good. We getting all the context. This is some really serious allegations here. Kenji, I hate you. Why are you mad at me? They also have the clip in its entirety without audio. Don't worry, I'll add the audio. They also attached screenshots of Discord DMs between anonymous people who were claimed to be two friends of Dreams and said it was them discussing me having sex at a minor. In these screenshots, they say that I was confronted about it and that I admitted it. I've shown you every piece of evidence they posted without changes and I've mentioned everything that they've claimed. Now, okay, so to... before before we continue, you guys are saying or some of you guys were saying that um there was a huge document coming out proving this or what? Did anyone actually read the document before we even start? Yes, 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 yeah. And there's, I have the link. Okay, okay, okay. So before we do that, let me go ahead and see. And is this like proof? Is there like actual proof or is it just like, yeah, he did this and, and that? There's 24 pages. Oh, go f yourself, dude. Oh my God, trippy, 24 pages. I'm gonna wait for a nice YouTube video to come out about it, dude. To reiterate, this is not true. Every piece of evidence is either out of context, edited, blatantly lied about, or presented in a very disingenuous way. Again, I did not groom anyone. I also was never confronted about grooming by any of my friends. Now, of course, when something like this is claimed, it's extremely serious. So I'm gonna break it down in detail. Okay, so who is this accusation from? It's from an anonymous burner account. Maybe oh, wow. the day of the accusation, which is interesting. So we don't know who they are, but we do know who the victim is. Jamie, right? And how old did they say she was? They said 16 slash 17. Okay. So what else do we know about Jamie? They said she left the internet in 2020. So because they apparently can't, let me tell you who Jamie is. I follow Jamie on Twitter, which 
people Monkey. quickly pointed to as uh -oh. proof. As you can see, Jamie is also followed by Skeppy, Verb, and Spifey, other YouTubers from the community. I met Jamie when I wasn't even a YouTuber. I had just posted my first ever YouTube video less than a month before. I had less than 100 followers on Twitter the month uh -oh. that I met her. I made a lot of friends around this time because I wasn't a big creator Monkey. and I was part of a lot of online communities as a fan. She played on Bad Boy Halo's Minecraft server and was a fan of Skeppy. I was trying to grow and make connections and I had pretty much just made my Twitter account, so I made a lot of friends. Many Many people from this time I'm still friends with to this day. People claiming that me following her is proof that I sexed underaged fans or groomed her at all is ridiculous. These claims are completely false. They were right about her age. She's 21 now, so she would have been around 17 four years ago. That's uh -oh. about the only correct thing they said this entire time. Like, remember they said she quit the internet in 2020 as a convenient way to excuse any questions about her? Well, she didn't. She liked a tweet from last month actively tweeted all of 2022 and she changed her bio and twitter account name when this happened just wanting to be left alone that's interesting and she actually tweeted saying she only privated her account because some of her irl friends were finding it and she didn't want them to i wonder why they lied about that maybe because the person who's claiming this doesn't know jamie doesn't know anything about jamie doesn't know me doesn't know anything about me and is being malicious and making up whatever they can to end my career let's talk about some other stuff mm -hmm. they also said they posted the videos with permission, which of course makes the videos seem much more real. Well, it's apparently me, and I didn't give them permission, and it's apparently sent to Jamie, and she didn't give them permission. She quit the internet. She couldn't have. They even critiqued Moist Critical for his video, saying how terrible it was, claiming that I admitted that the Snapchats were real, which I never did. In their original tweet, they notably say, when she had her age in her bio, which seems oddly specific, just to remove the few people that would say, well, what if he didn't know her age, when even in their own proof, which is random Discord messages with no context or who the messages even are, uh, and another part of their screenshot- Okay, 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 okay. He, uh, he's fucking up on this video. I get we're an hour in, he needs to slow the fuck down and start explaining it a little bit better. It's starting to feel emotionally charged, and it's starting, and questions are going to arise. In this situation, you need to slow the fuck down, explain everything. Honestly, you feel me? Like, he, he's going, like, off off the rails right now, bro. You know what I mean? And it's like, all right, chill the fuck out. Calm the fuck down. He's just ranting right now. Yeah, he, like, he, he needs to get to, like, the facts of it. Anonymous person number two says this, but for some reason, that's cropped out of their tweets. Because they don't even know what the screenshots they're using as evidence say. They don't care about the truth. They're just making things up as they go. And because it's a claim against me, people will just believe it. They can say, Jamie left the internet. No proof, but I guess she did. They say they got permission to post these videos. I guess they did. They post a video of Snapchats. Say it's mine. They never show the Snapchat profile or any proof that it's my Snapchat, but I guess you can't change your Snapchat name for free to anything at any time as many times as you want. So it must be Dream. No more evidence needed. They're telling the truth. Even with what little context and evidence they have, they have to crop things and lie to try and hide the fact that they know nothing. But the burner seemed so confident. They couldn't be being malicious. They even put in their bio that if Dream reached out, they would personally give him their information so that he could sue them because everything they were saying was 100% true. Oh, what? They, that's not in their bio anymore? I, that's that's weird. I wonder why they removed that. They did reveal who they got the original screenshots from. So let's see what that person has to say and why the burner was so confident in their claims. Quote, I don't know Jamie. I've never known her. I've never had a private or a public interaction with her at all, unquote. Wow, seems like they have a whole lot of information. Is this fucking Reddit we're looking at right now? What the fuck, what the fuck am I looking at, bro? So I reached out to them to try and find anything that I could find to find out what this was even about because I've never been confronted by one of my friends for grooming and I've never groomed anybody. So I found out who was anonymous in these messages and let's hear what they have to say. These screenshots are extremely out of context and used disingenuously to tell a story about Dream that isn't true at all. I haven't spoken to Dream in a very long time, but to my knowledge, he has not interacted with underage fans inappropriately. Okay, but who is this? If they're anonymous, what? Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to lose. I'm starting to lose. I'm not going to lie to you or in any way that could be considered grooming. These DMs were posted by the burner without my permission and without ever contacting me beforehand. They were sent to the burner by a vulnerable person that was upset and being taken advantage of while under the influence of alcohol. I want to be anonymous and stay completely out of this because all the terrible stuff I've seen happen to everyone mentioned on both sides is very scary. This conversation was private in my life and no one deserves to have their personal life dug through because of anonymous people making false claims without knowledge or context about anything they're saying. This person was not involved at all and did not consent to anything. Now, if you're a little confused, I am too. This is a burner account 
making up things. Their story makes no sense. Okay, so let's just summarize uh. this. This allegation is not from a victim. It is from an anonymous Twitter account that was made the same day as the allegation. This anonymous person claims that I groomed a girl named Jamie. They did not ever contact Jamie. They did not know Jamie. They got none of their information from Jamie. They even incorrectly said that she quit the internet years ago when she's still active to this day. They posted videos claiming to be from me to a minor. They never showed proof that it was from me or my Snapchat profile. They never showed proof of who it was to. They cropped context from screenshots, lied publicly and said I admitted the videos were from me. They falsely alluded to the fact that the victim gave them permission and ended up causing massive harassment and terror to Jamie, who they said was a victim of mine. The person in the screenshots claims that I'm not a groomer, that they're extremely out of context and that the burner doesn't even know what was being discussed and that now their personal life is being dug into due to an anonymous burner account. On top of that, no one even taps to open the Snapchat. There's no finger, you can't open snaps with a button, but it doesn't even matter because you can see that no buttons were pressed. So how did it open? Nobody touches the screen. You can't open a Snapchat without tapping. Wait, wait, actually, he's he's kind of making a point here. Wait, wait, no, actually, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. like he, he could have just started with this. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, screen recording? Oh, true, screen. it could be a screen recording. Wait, oh, you're right, you're right. It could be a screen recording. See, I'm dumb, I'm dumb. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It might be a screen recording. You're right, you're right, you're right. Tapping the button to open it. So ignoring the fact that there's no proof it's even me, how is this video even real? How did it open? The video doesn't even make sense. People have also pointed out that frames are missing and that the normal Snapchat animation doesn't play at all. But despite all of that, hardly anyone asked any questions. If you replied asking any questions, you got called the groomer supporter. Despite the fact that the proof was a video of a video of a video from screenshots of DMs of screenshots of DMs. You have to go four people deep to find anyone that has ever talked to Jamie. What? I'm not even in any of these screenshots. And the video of the video of the video has like 10 frames where you see the name Dream. Most people spreading this did zero research, but wait, they reported me. They even reached out to the Orange County Police, my local police, to put it in writing, put their name on it, and solidify that their claims are correct. Thank you for calling the Orange County Sheriff's Office. To continue in English, press 1. Oh, shit. To continue in Spanish. Oh, shit. My name is... I, I have a YouTube channel and I live stream and, and stuff and um, long story short, very recently someone anonymously posted a bunch of like fake stuff online saying that I'm a pedophile um, and of course it's from like a burner, like anonymous burner account, can't really, you know, whatever. Um, but anyway, uh -huh. in their post, they call, they, they said that they called and talked to the Orange County um, Sheriff's Office about it and of course they said that to try and like make me look guilty for being like a predator somehow, but I guess I, I wanted to call and try and See, get more information, I guess. What's your name? Mm -hmm. People are there, they're slandering you. There's nothing, and this is the, we have a very broad database. Nothing, no interaction. I did last name, first name, first name, last name, nothing. Zero, nada. So no, there's, there's nothing. No, no, like, no reports been made. reports, anything? Nothing. Your name has nothing next to it. There's not even... So right. if you would like to make a report and you feel like someone is um, harassing you, all, all right. right? But whoever's telling you that stuff, you may need to file a complaint because that's harassment and that's called slander. And you do have civil rights, so you can make a report if you want. Okay. All right. Thank you so all much. All right. Merry Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas. Bye. And not that taking legal mm. action as an anonymous source would prove anything, but just to be clear, I have searched far and wide, sent open access requests to police departments. So you're not listed in my system at all and all police records are public in florida where mm. i live not a single person has filed anything against me anything even though every claimant has claimed that they have again not that it would prove anything if they did it would be disproved in court but not a single person did i also don't have any civil cases brought against me meaning no one has officially accused me of anything from anywhere mm. despite again every single person claiming they have this is public record but despite everything you've just heard before this in this video, when this tweet dropped, people were celebrating in the replies. Celebrating in the replies of a tweet that's supposed to be about a child being sexually abused. Yikes. That is not okay. And just shows that you actually don't care about victims. About Yikes. He kind of making a point, bro. He's kind of making a point. Motherfuckers are only happy that he's getting canceled and don't actually care about the victims and getting help for the victims as well. 
Yikes, bro. Hold on. You just care about taking down dreams. Twitter. Which is the same thing the burner account cares about. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about what's real. They care about saying whatever they can to ruin my career. They don't care about victims. They don't care about Jamie. If you still don't believe me, let's hear a statement from Jamie herself, who seemed terrified, didn't want anything affecting her real life, wasn't a victim before, but is now due to all the harassment and people spreading sexual things about her without her knowledge or consent. My name is Jamie. I want to make it very clear that I was never groomed. I definitely... Okay, this, I don't like this, bro. I don't like this, bro. What? He's reading a statement, but like, I don't, like, there's no proof of, re like, I, okay, if I, if I were to do some type of video like this, I would literally, what I would do, I would just fuck all this extra editing shit. I'm just straight up, I'm live streaming the whole thing and I'm sharing just DMs on top of DMs on top of DMs on top of DMs. You feel me? Just wait. Okay, heard you. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait before but is now due to all the harassment and people like i wouldn't I, what i'm what i'm saying is if you're doing allegations and you have people like talking for you and all that bullshit i would make sure there's no room for interpretation at all you understand i would make it very clear cut dry bro you see what i'm saying sexual things about her without her knowledge or consent my name is jamie i want to make it very clear that i was never groomed i definitely am not a victim of dream I don't know how or why people are using my name and information without having ever asked me if any of it's true. Everything claiming to be about me was posted without my consent. Leave me alone. I want nothing to do with this. I have been getting harassed by people, either saying I'm looking for attention or digging through my life trying to confirm things I want nothing to do with. Leave me alone. More Jamie's information in the description. Mmm. Mmm. Uh, that shit smell fishy. He's burning the whole kitchen down. So Trippy, in this, in the document, you read all 24 pages? Everything in the description, including his merch. You're saying that like it discredits anything though. Like what? Like dumb. Sorry, I didn't hear you. What? I said, did you read all 24 pages of the document that you were talking about? Yeah, I have a copy of it and a link to the OG burner. Okay, so you, you read all of them. Was anything from Jamie in that document? Like straight up? Please read it first yourself, bro. Well, I'm asking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out after this. I really just want to get to the XQC and Pokemon shit. That's the only thing I'm watching before. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yes. So there's something like directly from Jamie. Okay, but Jamie... Jamie was apparently active on Twitter. So did she come out saying something on her account? Kenji, he said, if a content creator wanted proof of identity to request it from him, I think. What? Kenji's not reading 24 pages. I'll, I'll skim through that, bitch. I'll skim through that, hoe. I got locked for suspicious activity after she was blocking all of her friends. So none of them would see the things being said online about her. She didn't quit the internet in 2020, like the burner claimed, but she probably will now. She had to change all of her social media ads and people were messaging friends of hers, all because in a non person made a claim on her behalf without even knowing if it's true spreading sexual stories about her Yikes. as a minor to millions of people creating victims in the process hope it was worth it so i'm sorry jamie i'm sorry that you were used as bait i'm sorry that you have your life being dug through by people and i'm sorry to all victims that have to see this that have more fear about coming forward because all this is terrible and no one wins and i'm sorry to anyone bro else. why would you add merch to a description of an important topic okay hazel how does that have to do anything to do with anything though motherfucker if there's if there's important documents and then you have a, a link to merch and all the important documents are proving all the allegations wrong how like again y'all just be making problems out of nothing who cares that's terrible how who fucking cares Cares. It's literally not that serious. Like y'all just be, oh my God, y'all so dumb. Like what? Obviously they didn't look. There isn't a merch link. There's not even a merch link. So are they just fucking talking? Oh my fucking God. All Instagram messages between Amanda and me. Every picture I've posted online, full Uber driver, emails, statements in a burner statement from Jamie. There's not even a link for the merch. Y'all are just fucking spreading mis y'all are addicted to spreading misinformation i swear to god oh my god my uh, i have dumb i have dumb viewers like y'all y'all have an addiction of just sounding stupid y'all just like spreading misinformation and then making a problem out of it as well seek help bro y'all are dumb as hell and else that got involved or dragged into it sorry for those that were taken advantage of i'm sorry for those that were lied to again 
No one wins. It's incredibly hard to navigate these situations. There's no benefit to somebody putting their name and face out there to defend me or clear up complete lies if even when someone's completely in the wrong, they're still praised as a hero because it's against Dream. As I was Bro. literally about to post this video, another burner thread by a different burner was made about Jamie, claiming 24 pages of evidence that I groomed her. And the very first line of their document, the Twitter account Burner22 recently provided a screenshot of a Twitter DM conversation between them and someone by the name of Jamie. This is massively incorrect, a lie, and never happened, as you now know. The burner account was not any of the people in any of the messages, never spoke with Jamie, and the actual person in these messages has made a statement in this video debunking this, as well as Jamie. And this is the first line of their 24 pages. Their proof was all to show that I knew Jamie, followed Jamie, and that Jamie was a minor. All things that they didn't need to stalk her to do. Maybe let victims speak instead of digging into their lives. Their proof digs so much further into Jamie's life, including by stalking four-year-old Twitter accounts of hers using the Wayback Machine, so that even content that she deleted and content from her private accounts are now being stalked. Leave her alone. This tweet has 40,000 likes in 10 hours as of me making this. This is ridiculous. Anyways, I tweeted when I first saw this claim pointing a finger at someone that I thought was behind the burner account. I was messaged by multiple friends with proof linking them to the account. They were the only non-anonymous name on any of the screenshots, have a massive dislike for me, and were actively replying to the allegation. So my obvious assumption was that they are behind the account. This person used to be a friend of mine many years ago, and we are no longer friends for unrelated reasons. They claimed sense that their only involvement was that when they were drunk and having a manic episode, that they sent some screenshots of stuff into a group chat with people that were asking them questions. They claimed that they have no other involvement. They said they don't know where the videos are from, that videos were never sent to her, and that yeah, the screenshots in her DMs were pictures and not actually videos. She claims that she did not send the screenshots, claiming that I groomed anybody. Okay. Okay. If the victim is saying, or or the person that you're claiming is a victim is saying that she's not a victim, that she hasn't been groomed, that like leave her alone type shit. Why are we not believing a victim or quote unquote victim? Why are we just like, shut up, bitch. You don't, you don't matter. You don't matter in this. Fuck you dream. Am I bugging? Or is that like, is that wrong to say? Or am I bugging? They didn't cover the full document, but if there's nothing straight from Jamie, like saying something, like it, it would be different in that 24 page document where she comes out, we still gotta check it out. But in that 24 page document, if Jamie comes out and says, hey, I was groomed by Dream, but I don't wanna talk about it. It would be different if it was like that. But if Jamie, if Jamie's not even like, no direct nothing from Jamie's in that document, I don't think, like what? I gotta see the document? Yeah, for sure. We're gonna check it out, check it out and that she had nothing to do with them being posted by the anonymous burner account. Now, if this is true, which I- Because they're obsessed did, with canceling him, they create more victims and disregard actual victims because it's all uh, in the name of getting him off the internet. Yeah, true. Assume it is. It's just another horrible thing the burner account did, taking advantage of a drunk person who was not having a good time and using their past with me to try and get dirt on me is just ridiculous. Now, I don't know who's behind the burner account because it's an anonymous account. And unfortunately, they removed the thing from their bio that said they'd tell me who they are so I could sue them. But regardless, my original tweets were worded poorly and people read into them, including her, and thought that I was claiming that the videos were real, but that I sent them to her. The screen recordings in my screenshot were from after the allegations were made, but I don't know how I would mean that. I only posted screenshots of her screen recording my chats to show that she was actively collecting information, but I see how if you don't know the dates or really anything, then you could think that. In my tweet saying I was making a video about this, I called the audio essentially unsubstantiated revenge porn with revenge porn in quotation marks, while of course denying that I groomed anyone. People again took that as me admitting that the audio was real, even though I literally say essentially unsubstantiated and put revenge porn in quotation marks. It is incredibly violating to have audio spread to the masses saying that it's you moaning, that people think is you moaning. Yo, Whether go ahead and moan for us. Let me hear, we gotta compare, bitch. That's the best way to do it. Yo, Dream, start moaning for me right now. And then that way I could compare the moans, bro. What do you mean, huh, chat? What are you talking about? Kenji, oh my God. I mean, I'm making points though. I'm making points. Kenji, what? I mean, if, if we hear his moan right now and then we compare it to the motherfucking Snapchat moan and if it's the same, we got our culprit. If not, hmm. Maybe we don't have our culprit. I burped a little bit, sorry. It Type is you moaning or not. It could be anyone moaning. It does not matter. It's still violating. This is sent to your little sister saying it's you moaning. It doesn't matter that it's not you moaning. It's being said seriously that it is. This is, in essence, revenge porn. This isn't even the only time I've had claimed sexual stuff spread about me. Once, people spread a video that was like deep faked or something of me sucking my own dick. Uh, it obviously wasn't me, but so many people thought it was, which even caused some YouTubers to make videos like this. You guys know I've never been the biggest fan of the YouTuber Dream, but I have always had respect for him as a person. That ends today. Dream sucked his own dick.
you know, I thought this was some sort of joke. And then I saw the reply. It was a video of Dream sucking his erect penis. But of course, while this was all- What is this Minecraft drama, bro? What the fuck is going- What the f is going on over there at twitter.com sorry formerly twitter.com now x.com pure insanity it is madness we are descending going on on twitter it just was okay to lie about me and all the people posting fake screenshots and memes and taking things seriously from parody accounts just proves how easy it is to fake this stuff so let's talk about fake allegations and how horrible they are it's become a bit of a trend in the online space or at least the gaming space to fake grooming allegations there have been fake allegations against bad boy Halo, which the person ended up tweeting and admitting they were fake and saying that they're just kids that made Yikes. a mistake after he legally threatened them. There have been fake allegations made against Sapnap that, again, they admitted were fake. After I replied this time and called out something that was wrong with their story, they continued to lie and try and convince me, though. There have been false allegations against Carl, Rambu, Wilbur, probably every Minecraft gaming creator you know, me saying any name doesn't even matter. Not everyone gets traction, and not everyone has as much effort put into it, but there have been hundreds. There were a few notable ones against me during the last month. One was disproved because it was proved that the video was edited based on a frame Yikes. Hop. Another was disproved because of a photo in the background was from Tumblr, but there was one Yikes. thing similar between all of them. They all showed fake evidence. They all showed fake edited Snapchats. They all showed fake edited pictures or videos. And that is scary. But sometimes they didn't even need evidence. Someone tweeted out that I wasn't working on my video. Why he dragging Rambo into his mess? Well, he's just showing that people fake shit. It's not out of the realm of possibility that people fake shit for clout and attention online. Again, look at quite look at the quite situation. Someone literally had zero proof, dragged his name, fucking described the most heinous and craziest crime you can ever commit against a person. You know what I mean, and, and like obviously he disproved it, but it's just crazy. That I was actually out meeting a fan I met when they were 16 at a bar and that I got stood up and laughed at by everyone and this just didn't even happen didn't even happen but you don't even need any proof Yikes. it was Thanksgiving and I was charging my car by my grandparents house and I went to a non-alcoholic bar and played ping pong and was never stood up by anybody they can just make up whatever they want and rudely take secret pictures of me yeah people will believe it this is crazy stalker behavior they even said that I was the most ass ping pong player in the place when I was undefeated they even had to lie and slander my ping pong record and then of course parody accounts are tweeting images like this yeah Thanks, bro. That kind of so you can't even go out in public. People just be making wow, that's crazy. One faking me, DMing them, and threatening them legally, or lots of other stuff. And again, this just shows how easy it is to fake stuff, especially when you're a burner account that has no accountability. One of the people that made the fake allegations even tweeted that I can't sue them, that they're anonymous and on a VPN after they were caught. People will take a claim with almost no evidence and run with it and ruin people's lives, hundreds of jobs, families, not even just when it's me. It may only be a trend in the Minecraft space right now, but it won't be that way for long. Okay, XQC. I know you're probably watching this. Oh, this is what I wanted to see. We're leaking XQC and Pokemane private messages. Oh, it's time. Oh my God, we got ads. I'm waiting a minute. These motherfucking, these peasants with no sub, they got to see this, dude. I'm excited. This is the only thing I, I honestly cared for, dude. I waited fucking an hour and 17 minutes for this. Mm-hmm. Peasants? Yeah. Thank you for waiting, Kenji. Got you. I want you to address this. Oh, want you to address this. Um, yo, can't stop thinking about you, dude. Like it's bad. Yeah. You know you don't want me you don't want me to bring up Lil Nas X party again, but I need to be your gag daddy. Check snap. Bitch, what? Bitch, what? Okay. Now now we're getting uh what the f is going on here, dude? What? What do you have to say for yourself? It's irrefutable proof. Look, here it is on a second phone. What? Prove to me you didn't send me this video. Oh, is he, is he joking about it? What the fuck? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is he, is he kind of showing like how people could fake shit? Is that what he's doing? Yeah, he is. Oh, got you. He's showing how easy it is to fake stuff. And like, all right, you believed it. Got you. Okay. Touche, my friend. Touche. Got you, got you, got you. It's making sense. Or you're a perfect. Can I see your juicer again? Here, I help you out, brother. Check snap. Forever. And everyone watching this will now know it. Or Pokimane. 
You've been getting some hate for your cookie prices recently. And I don't mean to expose you, but you did say this to me. Oh, is this real? Now, You're is this real? Forever. Obviously, the other the XUC is a joke. Is and this real? This will now know it. Oh, my God. Hey, hope you're doing well. I'm launching my first ever product next month. Would love to have you among the first to try it. If you're interested, please fill this out on Monday. Take care. They're just some stupid cookies. I repackage and I'm selling at 10x price. But but my fans are stupid as fuck. So they'll buy them anyway. Their taste, <laughs> they taste pretty good at least. Time to get rich off stupid stupid little girls and simps again <laughs> is he fucking trolling I, it's fake i don't know <laughs> Ew. You he's actually going to me Ooh. he's clapping back and i think that's disgusting what do you have to say for yourself what more proof do you need i also have the cookies she sent me and a signed <laughs> note from her this is oh shit it's, i don't know if this is a joke or not hold on bro irrefutable evidence you get the point i made all of those pieces of evidence in 10 minutes with only free programs wow. it's stopping anyone from going and making a fresh account wow. making evidence and then accusing a person they hate of something vile be careful what you believe and ask questions believing real victims is important Ooh. but not believing fake victims is very important to real victims too oh long he kind of made a point though. No, he kind of he kind of got his point across chat it's easy in 2023 it's easy to fake some shit Bitch, i almost believed it for a second what the fuck? oh my god i'm part of the stupid people for my conclusion on this video i'm I stupid as shit to say first of all i, I just want to recognize that i'm probably in this position because of myself the people that made these claims undoubtedly had unhealthy parasocial relationships with me and that's why it's gotten to this point i want to and will do anything i can to got my, ass. my view on fans has shifted slowly over time jumping massively when i face reveal than actually got to meet fans in person which made things much more real and massively changed my perspective i think it's incredibly unhealthy to be obsessive with someone and i also think that it's clear to anyone that's stepping back and looking at these situations that people obsessively hate me and are making up lies about me which is also because of parasocialness parasocial love turn to parasocial hate. And I have no doubt that the anonymous people making these fake allegations were once big fans of mine. Mm. I grew up being a massive fan of football and I had jerseys of my favorite players and was very passionate. So I've always related to stands in that way, but my passion never turned to obsession and I never truly realized how serious it can get. Even sometimes when people were literally telling me, I think that part of why I'm in the position that I'm in right now is because I started pulling away from my fans after my face reveal. Mm. Meeting fans in person made things much more real and I wasn't so chronically online anymore because I actually had real life and things to do. I think that the fact that I'm a very relaxed person overall that has relaxed boundaries has encouraged that type of behavior too. So I'm just going to re-clarify some of my boundaries. One, I don't support any sexually explicit art of me or my friends. It never bothered me personally that much because I don't really care about anything, but it is just weird, especially if you're a minor and drawing anything like that. That's gross. I don't support anything inappropriate for minors at all. Art, TikToks, comments, mm. anything. It's gross. Two, serious shipping is bad. I think that prying into people's private relationships, being deeply speculative or anything like that is terrible. It's a pretty good jokes, video, right? I don't mind doing it for fun, but anything serious really crosses the line. Again, I've always found it funny being shipped with George because we're not dating and we're friends. But if you genuinely think that we are dating and it's part of your personality shipping is so weird chat. you need to get off the internet that is not healthy i'm sure i'll make more clarifications in the future but i just shipping is mad weird you know what the worst is and i see it in the vtube community bro i see i see desperate motherfuckers that so desperate for fucking clout they'll try to ship motherfuckers with each other you know what i mean like they'll, like it'll be like a vtuber and they'll be like oh my god oh man we should just we should ship you know it's just it's so creepy it comes off as real weird dude oh my god true it's bad dude just don't want anything weird don't obsess over me or my friends. I deleted a video called Stands on my second channel that I made a while ago that I don't necessarily view the same way now. That doesn't mean that I don't appreciate you as a fan, but again, just be normal. Be the passionate fan, not the stalker yeah. obsessive fan. I've already had people with access to all of my accounts for a long time, but I will be slightly changing how I use my accounts now. At the end of the day, I do just want to make Minecraft content and have fun with my friends. That's it. That's all. Because of that, I've been a bit of a detriment to myself by arguing on Twitter or getting into petty drama that I don't need to. So because of that, I'm just not going to be using Twitter anymore. I'm going to have someone run my Twitter and post tweets promoting my content. I'll still tweet non-promotional stuff just with it being positive only and going through multiple people. And I don't want anyone that's a fan of mine to take anything super negative away from this video or think about things in a really sad way. I want to mm. be positive and that's one of my favorite things about having a community at all, spreading positivity and love. So try and be positive. Say something nice today. Do something nice today. I don't want to keep letting this cloud loom over. Okay, <clears throat> I'll do something nice right now. Chat, you look very pretty. I'm lying. Over my head though, so I'm just gonna move on. I don't plan on making any more statements and I don't plan on talking about this anymore. This is it.
I just want to focus on making the best content that I can. So that's what I'm going to do. I have tons of Minecraft content that I've been working on and I'm super excited to put it out there. Pretty crazy. And I've been working on some stuff for over a year now. I don't want to throw the excitement away. And again, this was by far the biggest reason for my inactivity. So Minecraft Dream will be coming back full force, stepping away from Twitter and just focusing on putting out awesome Minecraft videos like I used to do. So yeah, I appreciate everyone that okay. watched this video all the way through. I'm sure it was a roller coaster. There's tons of links and information as well in the description. I also posted multiple videos on my site. Okay. 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 I'm caught up on all the dream drama. I'm be honest i only ever seen snippets randomly on twitter okay randomly of people just memeing him and his little ang with his fucking eyes out or his fucking tongue out you know what i mean some crazy stuff and allegations but i never really looked fully into it